and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. President Van Portley? Here. President Pro Tim Narsh? Here. Council Member Hobbs? Which mic? The left one. This one? I think that one works. This one? Yeah. It's harder for me. <laughs> uh, Council Member um, Lamb? Here. Council Member Luxinger? Here. Council Member Matheson? Here. Council Member Rook? Here. President Van Portley, we have a quorum. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item four, presentations, we have none. Item five, call to the public on non-agenda items. If you would like to speak to the council on non-agenda, we ask that you keep your duration to five minutes. Anybody like to speak on a non-agenda item? Good evening, sir. Harry Stephen, 311 North Shore. Uh, today and yesterday, I was trying to find the agenda on lakeorient.org, and I think it's almost impossible to accomplish that task. What I did end up doing is going on a search engine and asking for that, and I did find the agenda. And the supporting documents, the packet that you folks received, 267 pages long. I don't think people understand how much information is presented to you and your remuneration for your service doesn't nearly cover that aspect of it. The website in general, lakeorian.org, is not very friendly. The calendar doesn't have anything on it. The last one, and probably people in the audience are not going to like it, but I plead with you to offer no tax abatements for any of the projects that are coming forth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Please, come on up to the podium, state your name and your address. Hi, my name is Sharon Sedlak, 51 Crescent Avenue, Lake Orion. Um, the only thing I request is I've come to the past few meetings and I love coming to the meetings. I bet you I hear about 50% of it. Can you get the volumes turned up on just about everybody? This is, I'm trying to project myself because I know sitting back there, normally I can't hear it because people talk like this. If you could turn it up so we could all hear, we'd really appreciate it. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you very much. People in the back, would you agree? Can you, yeah, it needs to be better? Okay, great, thank you. Because we've, we've improved with the sound deadening, the panels that are on the walls. We've improved with the sound deadening, the panels that are on the walls. And, uh, oh, nice to you. Sorry. I know I'm a whole, but. Yeah. And uh, we'll continue, but I appreciate that input, so thank you. Anyone else? Okay. <clears throat> we'll move on to consent agenda. We have 13 items on our consent agenda tonight. Number one is insurance, liability, and property proposal. Number two is Lake Orion Live Gazebo Concert Series for 2022. Number three is certification of delinquent utility accounts to the 2022 tax roll. Number four is proposed amendments to Village Council rules of procedure. Item five, request to purchase radar speed measurement sign. Item six, police department reports May 2022. Item seven, those Council special meeting minutes, May 16th, 2022. Item eight, those Council regular meeting minutes, May 23rd, 2022. Item nine, Village Council special meeting minutes, May 25th, 2022. Item 10, Planning Commission special meeting minutes, May 16th, 2022. Item 11, Planning Commission regular meeting minutes, May 2nd, 2022. <clears throat> Item 12, Board of Zoning Appeals, regular meeting minutes, April 21st, 2022. And item 13, Board of Zoning Appeals, draft regular meeting minutes, May 19th, 2022. Entertain a motion. Move to approve the agenda, uh, consent agenda. Support. All those in favor, please. Wait, no. Um why don't we ask if anybody wants to pull a, an item? 
Uh, I typically do that first, so I assume you didn't. But go ahead. Would you like to call an item? Yes, one and four. Okay. Mm. So I'll take an amendment to the motion. I'll to remove items one and four. I'll make the amendment to the motion to remove one and four. And I'll amend my support. Mm. So we're going to have items two, three, and five through 13 in this consent agenda. And then we'll come back to items one and four. All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? Item one, insurance, liability, and property proposal. Ms. Wessinger. Yeah, I would, I would like to see <clears throat> the entire insurance policy before approving this. Um, we got like an overview, but the entire policy would be a couple hundred to several hundred pages, and I would like to look at that, especially um, considering that we're approving um, events against the recommendation of the fire department. So uh, can we get a copy of that insurance policy? Um, usually they send the new insurance policies out once we approve the proposal, but I will ask, I will send, I will contact the insurance agency and ask them to send us a draft on. Okay. Okay, and then one other issue is that we only get a complete policy every other year, and then we get the changed pages on the, on the opposite year. So I'll see what I have, and then I can email you. And, Perfect. Uh, you know. I just want to see it, and I, um, if, if it's the off year and you just have the the pages that are amended, yes. just let me know that too. And okay. um, so I, I guess I would make a motion to put a pin in this until next meeting. Postpone it to the Postpone next meeting. Postpone it to the next meeting. Okay. I'll support. All those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 <clears throat> Item four, proposed amendments to village council rules of procedure. Ms. Washington. Yes. Um, First, I have an issue with putting this on the consent agenda. Uh, according to our rules that have not been modified, um, the consent agenda is for routine items of a routine nature. Changing our procedures is not routine in nature. So I would like to know who put this on the consent agenda? Who made the decision to put it on the consent agenda? Mr. President? Yes, may. sir. Thank you. Um, thank you for having it pulled. It was not our intent to have it on the consent agenda, so I'm not sure where that came from because our direction was to put it on the regular agenda. So thank you for pulling it. We fully agree with that statement. And really, we weren't expecting any type of motion or approval tonight. What we wanted to do is start a dialogue uh, to get your input moving forward to maybe consider additional amendments on top of what we've already proposed uh, so that we can move forward with amendments that you may see as needed or necessary uh, to make the whole process more uniform and fair for everybody uh, to both, you know, put items on the agenda. Um, several things that pop to mind that maybe you might want to consider too is, is removing items for agenda. What's your policy or procedure for that? Um, or, or, or emergency items you need to add to the agenda, which isn't covered by the policy, and you can't possibly cover every single. Uh, no, I, under I understand that. Um, what prompted this opinion letter and the, the the change to the procedure? You know, uh, Ms. Kuchar got a request in, in, from, I think, Mr. Young. I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, Ms. Kuchar. Yeah, Ms. Kuchar got a request from Mr. Young after watching some council videos from past meetings. Mr. Young after watching some council videos from past meetings and comments and frustrations uh, expressed by certain council members at those public meetings. Uh, we thought it, it prudent to maybe try to assist council in their endeavors by maybe cleaning up and defining uh, very precisely what, what rules and procedures so everybody can present whatever project or issue they may want to present in a fair and impartial way uh, with some sort of uh, consent moving forward. So requiring for village council members to approve. That's mine. I, do you need me to, do you need me to? 
Take them. Okay. Um, so requiring four village council members to agree to even put something on the agenda. Of a non-routine matter. Is, is what's, and it's just a suggestion if council wants to consider a different standard. Okay, so this, the letter you sent is just an opinion. It's just an opinion. There's, no, there's just... been no change in law that prompted this, no statutory changes, no case law. No, other than the fact that it appeared to us there needed to be something to move forward with maybe a refresher on the rules of procedure and... and I don't mean to interrupt you, I just want to make sure that it's clear. There's been no change in law. No that prompted this? No. Just, well, and Mr. Young is not here to, to say whether or not he made that and I request. can't recall, but I, I do know that watch at least the last council meeting, uh, based on several comments of different council members from that meeting, um, that was kind of the onus for moving forward with some, some open dialogue with council to, to look at the rules of procedure and see if we could better those rules or change them or if there were things you didn't like in them to uh, consider, you know, revising them. Okay. Um, well, I do have a problem with the language of the proposal with regards to requiring a majority vote to even get something on the uh, agenda, even if it's in the future. Um, again, this letter was an opinion. Uh, and there's been no change in law. But this is in response to an issue that was unpopular to a majority of the village council members. Uh, that has been stated in the letter we received by the attorney and reiterated um, right now. If we change the procedures and don't have a safeguard to make sure that it's not on the consent agenda or it's in the proper place on the agenda to be discussed, that's a problem. And if we always change it because we disagree or have a heated argue, a debate over something in our village, that's a bad president to sit in. And then to require having a majority of the village council to even to vote, to even get an issue onto the agenda, that's an issue. Because we're a small community. There are going to be minority viewpoints and uh, unpopular viewpoints, popular to the village council members um, or issues that are not, we're not even aware of until somebody brings them up. Um, and they need to be discussed. They need to be discussed openly, transparently, and requiring a majority vote to even allow the, a non, um, routine issue to be put on the agenda. Um, we're already voting on it pretty much. We're voting and saying that issue is not important enough to be discussed at the village council meeting. So if we want to change this, we need to change it, but we need to have a very open and honest discussion about how we're going to change it. So and with regards to how the meetings are conducted, that's the president. The president is in charge of making sure the meetings flow. So if we have a set time for how long people are to talk, we should keep to it. And if we want to reduce that time, so be it. But requiring a vote before we vote, a vote before we even discuss an agenda item, that's not okay. Um, it, it actually inhibits our ability to represent you. Because if there's about 3,000 residents, give or take, in the, Lake Orion, in the village of Lake Orion. So if 2,993 want something on the agenda and they talk to one of us and we bring it to the village council meeting, but four people won't vote on it, or three other people won't vote on it to put it on the agenda, it won't get on the agenda. That's what this is saying. That's my comments. Mr. Narch. Um, and a point well taken uh, that this is advisory and we're to look at that, but I just kind of wanted to clarify, if you would, for us, sir, that 
Um, what you've recommended here, and I've read it, um, are these consistent with Robert's Rules of Order? They're consistent with other parliamentary procedures adopted by other uh, bodies, municipal bodies, boards, councils, commissions uh, across. This language was taking, taken from an example used by another, I don't know the exact municipality that I took that language from or, or used part of it from. Um, but yeah, it's very standard types of language, at least that part of it is. Um, you say it's standard language. Oh. No, hold on, clarification. You're not telling us what community. Well, I'm, I'm not. I'm going somewhere with my line of questioning. Okay. Um, and you, that was my next question: Is are there more than one community that have these types of uh, standards and procedures? There may be. I, I didn't do that thorough of a search of all the communities in Michigan. Okay, I understood. I found a, a, a sampling and. Um, Based on that sampling, this seemed to fit because of, of, of the issues raised. But again, it, it's to council's discretion what you want to do. I don't take a position on it one way or the other. It was just thought that, um, you know, if, if to have a majority vote to put something on the agenda, if you didn't have a majority to vote to put it on the agenda, you probably don't have a majority vote to even pass it at a, a future agenda. So I think that was the logic behind that type of language. Um, but again, okay, and, and, but for the record, I, I wasn't specifically speaking of just that item. Um, I was asking that all of the recommendations in here are to Robert's rules for standard meetings and used commonly in other communities as a, as a majority of what you presented to us today. I would say so. I mean, the only other distinction was that um, we distinguish between items of a routine nature and not routine nature. Um, I don't know if that's extremely common among communities, um, but the, the goal and purpose was try to get it out front ahead of time so council could have enough information to make an informed decision well in advance of any future meetings. Uh, so proper staff could do reports and provide background information for council rather than springing it on council at the last minute and being asked to make a decision that maybe you're not comfortable making without enough information to support that. Um, I wasn't trying to be obstructionist in any way. It was simply a suggestion. Thank you. Ms. Rock. Yeah, a couple um, clarifying things. So my understanding as I read this was that was um, the, f the vote of four members is the addition of items to the prepared agenda, not in advance because on pay packet page 47 under item D, regular meetings, it says to be included on the prepared agenda, an item of business shall be submitted to the village clerk no later than noon on Tuesday preceding the regular meeting. So if a council member has an item that they would like put on the agenda and they have all their documentation, they're supporting things, they can submit it to Susan on the Tuesday beforehand. It doesn't require a vote. It's they submit it and it's there. This with the, the affirmative vote of four members is to help prevent those items being sprung on people without having time to process all the, the information um, as I read it. Unless it's an item like of routine nature that, it, okay, that's easy, you know, we need, sure. But if it's an item that requires a lot more information for us to, to consider, to process, it just gives a safeguard to us that it's not gonna be tried, you know, to be sprung on us. And then in those meetings, as I read item number three under seven, so that's under item seven, the first paragraph, addition of items to the prepared agenda shall require the affirmative vote of at least four members of the council. That's the suggested edit. Then there's an additional item number three, items of a routine na of a non-routine nature introduced by members of council for a future meeting. So my assumption, and maybe that just needs some clarification, is that during a meeting, if something comes up, we can simply vote to say, hey, this isn't maybe for this agenda, but let's, let's put it on the, a future one, or it could be submitted to Susan before, by Tuesday of the meeting before. So as I read this, it seemed to me it just was putting some parameters in place for things that are being introduced on the fly, in the moment, here and now. That would require the majority of us to agree to take up at that time. 
But if you have everything already put together, as long as it's in to Susan or by Tuesday the week before, it's on the agenda. It's there for us to read uh, and then to consider. So um, as I read this, Claire, you know, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but that is the understanding that I took away from this, that there is a process that any of us could request as long as it's a Tuesday before, but it needs four votes if it's getting added as a last minute agenda item. And then the only other comment I had on this, this is helpful to see this again, um, because it's not easy to find. Um, Mr. Stevens, I agree that the, the website isn't always all that helpful um, in finding some things, but I appreciated it because I was one of those people who, um, who had mentioned you know, hey, what are the clear rules and procedures, especially when it comes to taking up items for discussion? And because according to Robert's rules, you know, we've heard, of, you know, we don't have to let the public comment on things, but under our current rules of procedure, under E, item number, uh, EC, I guess it says, you know, council will address items on the approved agenda as follows, presentation, discussion by council, then a call to public for discussion of the items. So nothing on here, tell, there's nothing to say, hey, we don't have to let count the public discuss. No, according to our rules of procedure, we have to let the, the public discuss. So in meetings where it's been said, no, we don't have to, that goes actually against our published rules of procedure. And so that was my big frustration point and why I wanted, why I said I wanna make sure we're clear on rules of procedure because I don't want public discussion to be cut off. So, and then after that deliberation and action by council, and that period is un uninterrupted by the public. So um, when we get to that point, then yes. But before that deliberation, before that final deliberation and action happens, the public have to be allowed to comment on agenda items as they come up. So those are my comments. Mr. Lamb. So I agree completely with Councilperson Rutt, and I completely agree with this council person here too. So Lug, my Lug Singer. Lug Singer, that's your name, with the baby, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then, um, so my comments are, I do not believe the document the council presented does exactly what you would like it to do. I agree with what you said. I do not believe this document is 100% what that says. Um, the portion where someone appropriately submits an item for the agenda in advance, according to our published rules, is good. At that point, I might suggest that a person that has an agenda item that they want to submit far in advance of the meeting, they have submit it and have a second from another member of the council. So there are two people submitting, that at least two people are going for something. And then we bring it forth to the meeting and the council can then act on it. You can have the up or down. That prevents like one rogue person, you know, putting all kinds of crazy things in front of the council every week. Additionally, I agree that the last minute uh, item agendas for drama and stuff may not be useful and it would be appropriate to have, you know, concurrence of the council to approve any last minute additions either from the audience or from the board. That would, I agree, four people vote, it's on or it's off. But the having four people agree to put it on the agenda is pre-judging and pre-considering a motion. I mean, not a motion, a, a, an item. What's the point of consideration if the council has already decided on an answer? So that's the point of having an agenda and having items for consideration. So the only way I digress with you are, is, and I think that perhaps we should just have a, two council people need to present an agenda item in advance, so appropriate time, and then at the council meeting, they can you know, decide, table it, ask for more information, and move it to another meeting. I, I think that's a nice compromise. The second one is public comment. Um, this is where I agree with Councilperson Luxinger. Public comment, I believe I was wrong in the previous meeting um, when I said I uh, wouldn't let Mr. Barnett speak. Okay. But, and I think that public comment is important, but I, I, I think it's important we're very clear in our rules of the procedure for the president, who's ever, or the president pro tem, or whoever is chairing the meeting, that we go through proper procedure for motion, support, and discussion, and that the council, if there's 100 people to talk about the same thing over and over again, 
that this be controlled and limited so that we have a pleasant and controlled discourse. And then lastly, council said he didn't put this up tonight for decision. He said they just put it up here for, so when Joe, or whoever put it on the agenda, put a recommended motion, he said he put it up tonight for us to study. Um, those are my comments. So. Council. Thank you, yeah, that was my intent, uh, Ms. Rudd, how I think you read. Maybe it wasn't uh, written as cleanly as you said it. Uh, and again, that was the intent to have it on the regular agenda for present, for exactly what was discussed to give us some guidance as to what you think you wanna see with regard to how this policy should take shape or nothing. So I appreciate everybody's comments and I'll go back to the drawing board and, and, and look at that from, a, from that perspective. I would request um, a list of communities that use this language and where you got it from. Sure. So I'll make a motion to receive and file with the understanding that the attorney's office will comply with questions asked and uh, uh, receive council input. Support. Further discussion? From the from us or from the public? From us. Any comments from public? <clears throat> Good evening. Hi, Kat Sedlak, 596 Central. Uh, you'll have to forgive me, I'm listening and learning as I go, so I try to make notes instead of just coming with preconceived notions. Um, so can I just clarify what Teresa said? Six days notice, and if it's after that, four council members have to approve, but before that, it's just, you can just add it? Yeah, you could, you'd submit, there's an agenda request form, agenda and request form that then is submitted to the village administration, to the clerk as she prepares the, the council packet. But if it's after that six days, then it would have to be, um, if we adopted these rules, a special vote to take it up that meeting. Otherwise, if it's not in that six days and it wanted to be added to an agenda, it would be the following agenda. Okay, so if I come to you with a concern mm -hmm. and it's prior to the six days, you can submit that and we can add it as an agenda item without the four people. Correct. Okay. Right. And, um, and keep in mind that right now the way it reads is that four people would have to approve it in within that six days. Mm, no, for no, last minute correct. items, no, less than six days, right? Yeah. If it's, well, that's if what it I was, meant. Yeah, it's less if it was within, the day. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Okay, so if it were seven days in advance or however much in advance, I could come to one of you, talk about it, and you could say, yeah, we'll put it on the agenda, and it wouldn't need four of you. Yeah. And what the proposed right. is saying, if you have something that you want to put on the agenda, we would vote on it first no. before putting it on a future agenda. If it was during the meeting. Yes. Right. Right. That, that third point is a little nebulous. I think the way it reads for the future agenda item, if we could just wait and put it on the agenda via the standard procedure anyway. So that's the one for me that needs cleared up. If we're in the middle of a meeting, yeah, we could just, that to me is just like a motion to table it to something, you know. Can I, can I clarify real quickly? I, I'm not sure about your question, but you are always welcome to go to the, the village manager's office and make the request to him. The village manager controls the agenda for the village of Lake Orion. Okay. If he chooses to put some request of your part on the agenda, he may do so without council's permission. He is the, he runs the village. So if you want something like a problem, something with your street or you want to do something, you can go directly to the village manager and he can put it right on the agenda if he so chooses. We can take it off if we so choose, but rarely do we. Okay, so, so help me understand, that's what I'm looking for is What we're talking about mostly is the village council people's initiatives to put items on the agenda. He's usually a little bit more involved or more controversial. So like routine citizen matters and, and things around the neighborhood, the village, the village manager is there for you. And he, he puts many of these little consent item agendas to have a, a, something repaired or a street corrected or something investigated. So that's an option available to you. Okay, so what if I, what if I came to Joe the manager or any of you individually as somebody to come talk to you about 
how things are run. But for example, we, we don't follow Robert's rules. We don't, we don't follow a procedural anything, which I think you, Teresa, brought up a couple of times ago. If I came to talk to somebody about that, just, just talking about this, this part that's on the agenda right now, more than six days in advance, would it need four of you to vote and say we can put it on the agenda or would me as a tax paying citizen coming to you with a concern or coming to Joe with a concern, would it then get on the agenda? Well, the, the village manager actually has the option to deny any agenda item request right now by any council person. Okay, that's okay. why these rules are, are fairly primitive and, and lacking. Susan, do you have anything to say? Council, oh, did you have anything you want to add, sir? I think the question was posed to the clerk maybe. Although I can speak to one thing. I know for members of the public, there is a form that mm -hmm. the public can get, download or get it from City Hall and fill it out. And that's an official re request to have the village manager consider putting that on a future agenda. Uh, as long as it complies with the time frame. So there's actual a village form for that purpose for, for members of the public to fill out. But Joe can still deny it? There's got to be, I guess, some sort of gatekeeping function when, when there's stuff that would be dilatory or, or not really business that would be before the village council. So there, there does have to be some gatekeeping function. Sure, if I'm talking about passing out marshmallows on the street, I'm sure he can exactly. say we're not going to put that on the agenda. But so, okay, so back to the, the issue at hand, I think. I don't mean to beat a dead horse. I just don't feel like I have an answer. So just help me out here if I missed it. If I, if I come here with a reasonable, and I realize that's a very subjective term. If I come here with a reasonable re request to Joe or to one of you, because I feel like I can talk to one of you and you can put it on the agenda and we can address it, as long as I talk to you about it and it's something that we should all be talking about, again, I know that's subjective, prior to six days, four of you don't have to vote on it for it to be put on the agenda? Correct. Right. Okay, then I won't, I won't beat this horse anymore. Um, so, okay. again, my notes are from everything that I've learned. We don't have an established rules of order here at all? No, we, we do. We okay. Do. Mm -hmm. This is a proposed change to that. To that. Okay. Um, okay. And Mr. Nars, would you like to add something? Or I, I would. Please, I've got tons of questions and I'm trying to organize them. So okay. you might have answered all of them in this dialogue. I just. I, I, I've just I've been involved in small government for 40 years and I hear your frustrations and also your questions. And I would encourage the public all the time, and this, this happens all the time, and I've experienced it. So someone comes in and they'll go to the village manager, <clears throat> excuse me, and they'll say, I have a question about DPW procedure or uh, police procedure, or they'll bring it up in a meeting. Um, all those doors are always open, and a lot of times the information that you're seeking, um, and this goes to everybody in the public, come see us, give us a call, call the manager. Um, they're the, the gatekeeper for the whole village, and then you start posing your question. He or she is gonna come back with, you know what, that's a great question for the police chief. Um, and this comes up in council meetings all the time. And then they're deferred back to, you know, give it the police chief, give it the DBW director. Um, and then I would say in, in my career, 99, 98% of everything that was a concern is resolved by those department heads um, who are running those departments to the satisfaction of the person asking the question. Uh, <clears throat> if it's an issue that they can't resolve or there's a request to change a procedure, or a policy, then that's something that would go back to the manager for a possible discussion by this group. But um, I, I, I've always said, I, please, you know, call the chief, call the DDA director, call the, the manager if that's in their bailiwick, and you'd be surprised what information you can get, um, and that they will be gladly come out and help you um, in those areas. And if it's something obviously different, policy procedure, um, definitely come see the manager. Yeah, I, I certainly respect that answer, and I think that would—that's a great answer. I just, I guess, what is the purpose in response to that? What is what is the purpose of this proposal then? Like, my, where where did this arise from? Um, my opinion is that uh, you—if you've been to some council meetings, we've 
drifted back and forth, and whether we have maintained our parliamentary uh, position uh, is always in discussion, but I think sometimes, at least for me, um, I, I don't mind having that uh, discourse back and forth. I mean, I always had an open door, and if, trust me, half the people uh, you arrested a domestic violence in my career loved you, and the other half hated you. <laughs> it just depends whether it was mom or dad going to jail. But give us a call. Let's have that conversation. Um, and I think sometimes when it happens up here, it can get uh, a little volatile, and what we're trying to do is get back to a little more decorum on the rules of debate, uh, including uh, and I raised this question the other day, I was thinking about it, council comments. I mean, can I sit up here and give you a four and a half hour council comment? Um, I don't think it's fair to everybody, but I think that uh, council comments are like a five minute thing, just like public comment. And uh, I, I think that's fair to everybody in the room. Um, so those kind of things, if we don't make that a um, kind of Robert's rules. And, and keep in mind, I, I've worked on other communities as well and their councils follow those same kind of rules. Um, they can be a little bit different, but they all kind of follow time frames or we'd be here till four in the morning. I, I think my concern is alleviated by hearing, and I'll have to read this to independently verify it, which I've done none of prior to this, but I, my concerns are alleviated by hearing that as long as, my comments or whatever is addressed prior to that six days, it doesn't need a council vote to suddenly be added. I think that was my biggest concern. If it's within that five days or six days or whatever, I don't think it's as much of a concern because before that I was concerned about why we wouldn't just have the dialogue and put it up for discussion. So, but it, it sounds like maybe that's not an issue. Well, well I, I, oh. think, I think uh, council, the term you used earlier is not meant to be punitive. I thought that that, I'm sorry? No, it's not. <laughs> right, and so uh, really what we're looking to do with this is to get additional and correct information uh, so that we can have the proper debate. Okay. And so when it comes to us two days prior or one day right. prior to the actual meeting, and and we've even had it where it's on our table right here. We haven't had time to study. And that's where we'd like to be able to say we'd like to move this to the next meeting. Okay, and so that's it's strictly within that, that uh, sorry, strictly within that six day yeah. time frame that we're, yeah. okay. May I make a comment? Yes, Ms. Austin. Um, you bring up a very good point that you know, you, you're here and you, you're just asking questions because you don't know. A lot of people come to village council meetings with something they have to say, that they need to discuss with the village council. Um, and they don't know the rules, pri you know, all of these Roberts rules. So this chain, this proposed change um, that those um, non-routine introduced by members of council for further, for future meetings, you know, if you said something and I made a motion, you know what, I would like to be able to hand out marshmallows down the road um, in order for it to even be put on a future meeting to, for discussion, we would need four, four votes. That's what this proposed is. Even though it's more than six days? No, 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 if you came to the meeting, like if you just said right now that okay. you wanted to hand out marshmallows. Okay. It, we would have to, and that's just, it's like widgets, you know. Um, let's say it was something important. Maybe marshmallows were really important to this community. Um, we would have, we would need a majority vote to even, he, to discuss it further. And what the, pro, what the problem is with what um, uh, the president said, what you said is that it's to make sure that we have all the information. That's one of them. Right. Go ahead. But, but we're voting on whether or not we're going to, the proposed rule would be that we're voting before we have that information as to whether or not we're going to discuss it at a future meeting. So we don't have any of the information that you're requesting to discuss in the future. All right, go ahead, Ms. Rott. Yeah, um, it, to, to clarify that, it's just, hey, I want to put marshmallows on this meeting today. Right. And I would say, no, I don't have the information 
four of us, you know, you don't have, it's not that we're saying, no, this isn't important to discuss. It's, it's important enough to discuss that I can't discuss it right now. It doesn't preclude you from then, tomorrow, submitting the agenda request form for the next meeting. So it's not preventing that. It's just saying, I don't have it right now. It's important enough that I need to have the information right now. So no, I'm not gonna take it up at this agenda on this meeting. Right, but even for the future, to put um, a non-routine item on a future. That's what I said was a little bit nebulous for me, the procedure for that, like why that, that piece is there. Uh, because we have the provision that as long as it's six days before, you know, the Tuesday before. So I'm, I'm a little unsure of what this exactly is supposed to be because it just seems like a simple like, Let's table that to the next meeting and type You're of pointing at yeah. three. I know three. May yeah. I ask, and I, I wrote this down a couple of times, what is routine? I keep hearing routine and non-routine, and maybe I'm super ignorant here, but I feel like that's, again, really, what is routine and non-routine? I feel like routine could be something like, oh, we forgot to put the electrical bill for one of our parks on the, you know, in there. Yep, that's a routine thing. We're gonna pay that bill. So I feel it's something like that versus, hey, we want to throw a mad marshmallow party here in right. Village Hall in two weeks. <laughs> so it's incredibly subjective. Is, is, there any, is there anything anything that can help me with this routine thing? I, I wrote this down. You mentioned a lot. And I am interested in looking that up. Uh, Mr. Chair and Mr. President. Yes. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned routine that much. I, it's mentioned yeah. two or three times in there. Well, I wasn't trying um, to attack you. I just, it was something that I honed in on. And would, would council be inclined to consider maybe taking a look at a draft model? To, and I didn't want to complicate things. I certainly, that was not the intent. The Understood. intent was to try to simplify things. And it seems based on discussion, maybe it's gone the other way. Would you rather consider maybe a draft of a from a a reliable uh, parliamentary Roberts Rules draft? There's model rules and procedures out there for councils across the country. If that's something, council, and maybe there's something out there, there's a better uh, a better mechanism to do business and if. In, in simpler than maybe what we're discussing this evening, I'd be happy to come back to council with that too. Well, and I, I, I'm just gonna jump in and say in my motion, that's what I recommended, is that we toss that back to you. Um, we haven't got to the vote on that, but it, my motion was to defer back to council and have you bring us additional information from other communities, perhaps identify those communities, how many, that type of thing. So really what you're saying is exactly what I think the motion uh, is asking. And I was gonna follow up with one other thing, and again, this goes back to the public. And this is why I say it, it, talking to the manager or department head can really help. Okay. And, and I'm gonna go down the government road, and I hate saying that because I, I'm like Jerry, I'm not government, but for four years I guess I've been government. But here's what happens, you come in and you say, I wanna throw a marshmallow party tomorrow. Um, it all sounds good, but the minute a government body approves that, then we gotta make sure that you have a permit from the health department, that the marshmallows, if they're individually wrapped, they have to be certified. If they're not individually wrapped, then it's an item the health department would have. So there's so many regulations that we have to make sure that the public's health and safety is taken care of, that when it's thrown quickly on an agenda, it doesn't give us time to do the due diligence that by law we have to do. So let me ask, and I, I did wanna ask this, and I still wanna res respond to, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, Councilman. I, oh, that's the village, village attorney. attorney. The village, village attorney, attorney. I'm yes. sorry, what is your name? Nick. Nick. <laughs> oh, sorry, Nick. Um, I, I do wanna ask you another question, but I, so if, I, if something is on the agenda, something is being voted on, it's not just being discussed? It's, it's 100, if I were, again, I'm, this terrible example, marshmallows, if, if I come to you and wanna talk about it, it's, it's going to be voted on and not just discussed? At the, if I wanna put it on the agenda? On, what, if it's on an agenda, then it's going to be voted on or okay. discussed, it could be tabled, it could be moved based on new information. But what it gives staff the ability to do is does this require, uh, require a legal review? 
Is it a change in something that we need legal review? Okay, we're gonna have to have the attorney look at it. Is this something that's gonna take additional police staffing? Okay, it's gotta to go to the police department to recommend it for staffing because is that budgeted? Do we have to do a budget amendment to provide additional staffing? Is additional garbage receptacles or street signs gonna be needed to close down the street? Then it's gotta to go to the DPW for their review. All of that comes back. Legal opinion, department head reviews, the manager gets that back, puts it on the agenda. That's why we say we need that time because every time a council agenda comes on, yeah, almost no. every single time, one of those departments are gonna be involved. So it has to go to that department head, can you do this? Is it, um, the village manager cannot speak for the police department, nor can the police chief speak for the DPW. So, so if I wanna, just <clears throat> your example, made me think of an actual legitimate example instead of marshmallows. If I, if I wanted to come to you and say, hey, a lot of us live on the lake, I think we have a huge trash issue, uh, there's, I'm picking up recycling and, and trash out of my yard and out of people's yards in the lake because we have open recycling bins. And if I want to say, hey, I'd like to get a closed recycling bin, obviously I could go do that myself. But if I just brought that and they said, hey, I think that we should provide these to everybody so that way we don't have as much trash in the lake. What you're telling me is I sh what I should do is instead of bringing it up here, I should go to the, Joe, village manager. the village manager, talk to him and ask him to put it on the agenda? Because it's a great idea. And what he would do is contact our waste provider and say, hey, do you guys have the flip type top closer? I got to believe in windy communities. Call Chicago. Okay. What do they do? Right. But that's what he would do. He'd contact our waste provider. He would look into it uh, or she and they would contact other providers, see if it's an option. Then they would get back to you. Um, if there's going to be an increased cost, that cost is going to be passed on to every member of the village. So if the waste provider is going to say, yeah, we can do that for you, but it's $4 extra a bin. Um, okay, so the village has got to pay that, so that, that cost is going to go on, that's going to raise everybody's. So then, is there a dollar value to this? And does so that, that impact? Rate, it would be brought to you and That would on. be brought to us, so then we can look at it, hear from you, look at the impact from the department heads, what the manager's review was, and then know how to accurately respond. And, and keep in mind, the manager would call you back and let you know that, and you might go, oh, forget that. It's a $75 sure. bin. Sure, we're yeah. discussing it, yeah. Let's come up with a new idea. So that's yeah. the better route than coming here. But the whole, back to the whole, this issue at hand, the six days is not, as long as you address it before six days, it can be addressed. It doesn't have to take four of you. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay, and then just back to discussing with Nick, I still, I, I didn't mean to be super confrontational, I just, I still feel like I don't have an answer for the word routine, and I just don't. Is there a place, and you can direct, direct me and say, go look it up, here's where you look it up. I just am very confused, and I feel like it's being thrown around like it's a definitive, objective if, thing. If I may, I think that's yeah. what the council and the attorney's office is gonna come that's up with. That's what you're saying they need that's to That's what up. we're gonna do. Okay. All right, thank you, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Rott. I have a very brief final comment. Um, just as a thing, yes, every item has some type of action taken. It may be as simple as receive and file information, but there has to be some action on an item uh, that does come onto the agenda. But then in regards to, you know, you, you asked like, you know, different formats. I'm in general, just me personally, comfortable with this, not item number three, that new red lined item, because that's confusing to me. I'm comfortable with some of the other changes. And just as a point of clarification, just so everybody knows too. So these are rules of procedure, how we have uh, agreed um, with proposed amendments to conduct our meetings. And then in absence of that, Robert's Rules does take over parliamentary procedures, so order of motions and things like that, that prevails um, in, if there's no other, if there's not something that's clear in here, the Robert's Rules does, does prevail, um, just as a point of clarification for the public, so. Well, and, and, and our procedures have to comply with state law. Correct. Anybody else? Hi. Uh, one moment, please. We'll listen to this gentleman here. Oh, oh. Hey. Don Connery, 745 Central Drive. Uh, just so I got this clear, none of you asked the village lawyer to draft this information. Is that correct? Council? I did Were not, you, Did you I receive did a request by anybody? Any council, council members? We received some suggestions from council members, and when posed to the village manager, he thought it was a good idea. 
So it did come from somebody on the council. Because I, I just find it interesting if Joe does it and we've got to go to Joe to get something put on the agenda and he says no and we come to the council and all of a sudden we have to have four people, eh, it kind of looks like maybe he's got a way of stifling the public's will. And, and to answer the question for council, Mr. President, if I may, the language was purely our creation. It didn't come from a council member. We simply said it might be a good opportunity to look at the procedures and policies to consider doing something that might uh, direct council with adding items to the agenda at a future meeting. It, in, the language was from our office. It wasn't from any council right, right. member. And, and again, the, the public is not prohibited, sir, from asking for an agenda item. It's just that it's looking to be prepared properly. So if it's submitted six days in advance, it can become an agenda item. No, I understand it can be that. Prepared part. properly. Mr. Narch? Yeah, I was just going to comment. I, I think our information is public, it's out there. Um, and again, I, I, I'm not speaking for all the council members, I'm just saying myself, but I, I think they would agree with this comment. If you email us, call us, uh, stop and say hello, and you got a concern or a question, we're going to filter that through what we kind of know about how to best help you. And if that's, you know what, um, that is a concern. Or you know what, from history I can tell you this, um, not that that will satisfy you, but we may end up saying, you know what, that's something I think you need to take to the manager and let's pursue this. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't have to call four council members, call a special meeting and vote just to guide you to get help. Agreed. That's never going to happen. So, uh, you know, I want to hear from people. I want to hear, uh, you know, um, that's my job. And, you know, we, and I think at the end of the day, Everybody here, every department head wants to help everybody in the village to the best of their ability, but remember that government affects everybody we serve. So at no time can we say, okay, we're gonna do this just for you. So it has to be, you know, which makes it hard sometimes. It's like, well, I just, I want those two police officers in front of my business making sure nothing happens to it. Well, we've gotta do that for every business. Sure. So, so there's those kind of things, but we'll always get your concern addressed either by the manager, the department heads, or this body. Well, I understand that. But sometimes you make decisions and you put hard numbers on there and you don't think of the consequences that come after that. As for example, in the draft that you proposed there, the statement was for the public, if they want to get something put on the agenda, they need four council members. It also says if you have a quorum. So if you've got a quorum and you don't have all seven members and maybe there was five and enough for having a meeting, now I've got to get four out of five. Whereas when you turn around and talk about council members and they need to put something on the agenda, you said the majority. So when you're putting a finite number on and the other one you're saying the majority and the two of them should match. They shouldn't be different. And my motion, sir, is tonight that we're about to vote on mm -hmm. is to bounce that back to him. We've heard sure. from the public, we've heard from council. Yeah. And I think there's gonna be a different boiled product coming out of this. This is the first we saw it in advance yeah. when we got our packets. This was language and information uh, from our attorneys that were suggestions and guidelines from other communities. Well, that but should concern you too, right? If we've gotta give six days notice for you to see it and he can provide something to you the day before and now you're here getting ready to vote. No, this was Shouldn't received be. six days previous. We, we got this. Okay. So that's what I'm saying is that was prepared in advance. So all that information is so we don't get it the day of the meeting. But we want to make sure that everybody has that. That's this discussion here tonight. And that's yeah. what he's listening, what we're listening. <laughs> and I think the other difference to the right. On Friday, but it may be. Yeah, it's usually Thursday or Friday we yeah, get our we packets. Got it Friday this time. Not and the other difference in the way it was written was that if council is going to add something to the agenda, they need to provide the information and the cost and the business model and what it went. It doesn't say that for the public. So I just well, want you to know, the way it's written isn't clear. I know that you asked for clarification. There's the majority, there's the finite numbers, there's what council's gotta do versus what the public's gotta do. It needs to be reworked. And, and, and I hope that you And just so you know, sir, not, not to interrupt, but just so you know, if you suggest something to the manager, the manager's job before he brings it to us is then to apply the cost factor. That's what he's going to, he or she is going to do. They're going to look at this and say, I remember a motion came to this body several years ago to dome the village. Yeah. I'm not concerned about any specific right, right. topic, but the just manager, about how it comes onto the Yeah, agenda. the manager then will assess what, what the anticipated cost is so we have that information. So that's their job. 
Um, even though the public might bring it in, it's a great idea, but what does it cost for the covered uh, receptacles? Understood. And can they supply those? Can they provide those? So then when we vote on it, we know, hey, that's a great idea. And it's affordable and it's not gonna break the bank. Right. But yeah. clarification, for the public to get an agenda item, it does not, an item on the agenda, it does not require the vote of four council members. Accurate, council? Correct. That's not what it says. If you'd like to put, well, you don't need to pull it up. You're going to rework that's it. That's the draft and the vote that we're about to take is yeah. to bounce it back with all of these comments combined to give us another draft. Okay. Four, four is only if it's something to consider as an additional item. Yeah, of a an additional agenda item. Agenda that's already been prepared. That's all. But for a member of the public to get an agenda item does not require four votes of the council. As long as it's in advance. That's correct. Yes. Thank That's you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else in this call to the public? Or, I'm sorry, public discussion on this item? I'm going to close this public discussion on this item, and then we move on to deliberation and action by council. And we already have a motion on the floor. But I do have one question for council at this time. Because it's been stated a few times about the duration of public comment. In the call to the public, it says, shall limit the remarks to longer than five minutes. Then when we are in our procedure, which is discussion of item by council, utilizing staff and consultants, and then we do the call to the public just like we just did. Is there a five minute limitation on that as well? Because again, it's a call to the public or not. You, you should always do that, yes. Um, okay. There's no policy to that fact, and, and you actually go above what most larger communities do. Uh, three minutes is the standard for most communities, bigger right. communities. You're, you're, um, you're benefited for being able, small, I, I think you said that yourself, a small village council meetings, uh, so you might be able to afford. Right. But that would be something to add in or look at. Um, and actually, if we're following strict um, parliamentary procedures during public commons, generally most municipalities that I've represented in my tenure don't engage in this question answer type thing. It's strictly come up as the public, give us what your thoughts are, tell us what you think. If you have some concerns, voice them to the council, and then it's council's uh, job then to take that into consideration and formulate your deliberations and motions based on those comments. So it's actually unusual for parliamentary procedures for this back and forth question and answer. Usually it's come up, state your, uh, state your comments, and then you deliberate on those comments, uh, rightfully so. Uh, so that's highly unusual. Uh, I think you've gotten accustomed as a council to responding and listening because you want to be responsive to your citizens, which is a good thing. But as you can see, it, it can take up some time. And if you don't limit that, you'll have the council meetings going to midnight, one o'clock in the morning. Uh, and then that, I assume most councils right. don't want that. So I would yes, like, I would you like should that, limit it. I'd like to get that clarification as well because that's where I have erred. I like public participation. I like you to be able to get all of your comments out and some cases, it's been stated it should be five minutes. So we might look at that as well in this revamp. That's my comment. Thank you. Anything else from council? We have a motion on the floor and support, and this is to table, to send it back. Get some changes made. All those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's passed. Thank you very much. Okay. Here. Moving on to approval of the agenda, I'd like to ask the council for a couple of considerations. And this first one is emergent, emergency request in nature, since we're talking about this agenda. And I'd like the council to consider an additional agenda item to create a three member committee to research and bring back a recommendation of costs and possible uh, candidate 
for an interim village manager. And so I'd like to add that to the item, to the uh, additional approval of the agenda. And I would like to make a comment or ask an additional item on item number three, which is legal review DDA items. And council, I need your assistance with this. If we discuss and determine that the best course of action, which is in this legal review, by two attorneys' opinions from both the DDA and the village attorney. Point of order. Yes, sir. Uh, you're discussing this item um, currently. I request that you would make a motion for some action, because I also have a motion to make with regard to this matter. Okay. So my intention would be that if the attorney's recommendation is accepted, that number four is removed from the agenda because it will be discussed by that committee. And that's it for me on my request for change to approval of the agenda. May I be recognized? Yes, sir, Mr. Okay. Uh, uh, Council President, I'm offended, okay? I'm offended by uh, your current comments. I'm offended by the treatment um, that you and Mr. Young gave uh, item B4 on the agenda item for consideration. Um, I would like to make a move to move agenda item B, other items, number four, council members Lamb's agenda item request. Okay, it disgusts me that, that this body would even put some shit like that on the agenda, all right? And I would like to change the name to Agenda Item Intention to Amend the DDA District. I've been working on this for over six months. I have hundreds of hours into this. We have residents that have been here for three or four meetings. I have made presentation after presentation. I have a petition with 80 citizens votes on it. And I would like to be heard. I would like that to be moved first on the agenda um, above these other matters. I would like it to be moved above item number one, the Mosheri development. And uh, if it's such a time as you determine that you don't want to act on my agenda item, you at least hear it. And then you can move on to your legal DDA uh, item, which is something that I recommended initially. That no one believe me. So I, that's my motion is that I would like to have my motion named appropriately, intention to amend the DDA district and that this uh, item be moved up to B1. So I'm gonna piecemeal this, Mr. Lamb. And, and Do we have a second by anybody? Second. I'll second for discussion. I'm a little confused if you were making a motion that wasn't seconded, but I'm just confused. I have a motion that's been seconded. So I had a motion first that we receive a second on that, which is the interim village manager and the discussion on item number three. I'll second that. And that is to, on item number three, if a committee is selected in that discussion item, that item number four be removed from tonight's discussion based upon the fact that the committee needs to review the data and we're looking to make sure that we continue working forward together with both the Village Council and the DDA in the best interest of this community. Sports. I, I believe that's out of order, Nick. I think he has to address that in the item and the agenda as it's called. Mr. Mr. President, if I may. Mr. Council, yes. As a matter of procedure, I, I think you probably have to take each motion one by one. You started with the first motion, so I think Council is proper to consider the first motion regarding the emergency request to create a three member committee to uh, discuss the uh, finding an interim village manager. So I think discussion probably needs to stop. I think we got ahead of ourselves or, okay. or you got ahead of yourself. So that's motion one, that should be either seconded or not and then move forward on that. And if there's support that can be added to the agenda. If there's not support, it won't be added. Uh, and then move on to the second and third um, 
items to, so, to see where they stand. So I would suggest you take that one first. Thank you, sir. I'm going to make the motion to add an item for interim village of Lake Orion manager discussion, a three member panel to be formed. Second. Discussion. Where's that? Would that be? Would that be added on the end as item B five? That's correct. And do I need call of the public on that item at this time? Well, you ask council discussion. Or not. That's afterwards. Correct. And because we're talking about adding or taking items from the agenda, that's generally not in order. Um, but it is the president's or chair's, does, if you think it's necessary because there is public comment with that regard, that's fine. You're just setting it down. There'll be time for public comment when you've had, if you've added it, right. the public can comment on that specific item once council gets to that item. So adding it to the agenda generally isn't necessary to get public comment on that. Okay. So any other deliberation from this council? We have a motion and support on the floor. All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? My second request is a question to order, Mr. Parliamentarian. Is it appropriate for chair to run his agenda items prior to asking for other agenda items? You know, I don't think Roberts will speak to that. I mean, obviously, once the approval of the agenda item comes up for approval, it's any member of council's prerogative to ask to be recognized to either add or take away from an agenda item. And uh, he, he started off with the first emergency, moved into the second one. Um, I know you called a point of order. So is amending an agenda item the same as approving or unapproving or adding or removing an agenda item. So what we're talking about now is a point of order on whether or not it's appropriate for him to amend and rewrite an agenda item that's been published <laughs> in the paper for six days and then rewrite it to orchestrate a political maneuver to defeat me and my people from being heard. That's not the intention, but go ahead. I think it was simply put that if item three under, I'm sorry, under it's B, other items, he's, but if he's that modifying was, the agenda item. He's modifying the agenda item. He's modifying the motion that's proposed for the agenda item. I do not think it's appropriate to amend it the, uh, under the agenda approval process. I do not believe it is appropriate to modify the agenda item. We can well, remove you just voted on modifying the agenda by adding an emergency measure. We added measure. an agenda <laughs> item. I said modifying an agenda item. Well, and so I don't, we're modifying the agenda, correct. not the specific published agenda item. And he's, I believe if I understand the motion that if number three is heard and approved by this council, that it makes number four, I guess, moot and, and thus not something so you're asking to have it removed from the agenda, is that correct, Mr. President? Not discussed. It, not discussed. This is, this is inappropriate and, and or it could, highly no, irregular. It could, it could be uh, uh, need approval for discussion at that point because it will become moot. We can just rewrite the agenda at will and the published text? Ms. Washington. If number three is approved, there will be a committee who will want to hear what council member Lamb has put in number four and what our residents, our constituents have come to discuss. I assume we've had a lot of people coming up and discussing this, uh, talking on this issue for a while. So even if the committee is created, your opinions matter in the deliberation of the committee. So I don't think that number four should be asked in the event of a committee being formed. Mr. President, and I don't necessarily disagree with that. I mean, obviously, 
it's if if number three is approved, then number four might <laughs> it might get changed on what your ultimate conclusions or ultimate decision making might be. But it's on the agenda. Um, I have no problem supporting the fact that from a parliamentary procedure, since it's on there, even though I understand what the president's trying to indicate, that if if it's on there and been worked at. Um, I guess the council can still consider that um, as part of, since it is on the published agenda. And if there's people here, more importantly, under parliamentary procedure, if there are people here for that particular item expecting to talk on that particular item or hear that particular item, it would not be beneficial uh, to take that off the table. So. Um, Fair enough. Yeah, I, I, I'll. Uh... I will withdraw my request on that item. But I would like to make one statement. My intent is to make sure that any information that's presented in regards to that item is accurate and verified. And that committee can do that. It's not to withhold discussion. It's accuracy. Thank you, Council. Mr. Mr. Lamb, you have your request now, sir, and that's to amend your item number four to say Mr. Council Member Lamb's request to amend the DDA district. Would that be appropriate? No, it, it says it currently says Council Member Lamb's requested agenda item. I would like it to say intention to amend DDA district. Okay, so, so I suggest that we stay with that portion right now. Is that okay? And I ask you, I'll vote. Yeah, if you like to. I'll second. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second for changing the item agenda description of number four. Correct. Yes. Okay. Uh, call the public on that. Any comments, and then go back to deliberation. Of the council, any comments? All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the language has been amended. And did you have one more, sir? My motion was to have item four considered before item three in order that some kind of intention could be established before the decision to create a committee or do further study. I think it would be more appropriate to bring up the action, you're, 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 they've asked to create a committee on something that the council hasn't any intention on. If you carefully read the presentation of item number three, it doesn't have any intention, just says here's a couple of opinions on two things to do, let's form a committee and bury it forever in hell, okay? So I, I think we should like have my agenda item move forward so we could decide whether we have any intention to do anything at all and maybe we could not even have to have item four because item three wouldn't be voted down. So I move to move item four ahead of item three. That's my motion. Okay. I'll second. So we have a motion to support any public discussion. Close. Go back to board member discussion. Okay. And I'd like to call a roll call vote on this, please. Matheson? No. Narsh? No. Rutt? No. Van Portfleet? No. Hobbs? No. Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Motion fails 5-2. Okay, so at this point we have an agenda that's been approved. Mm -hmm. We entertain a motion to approve the agenda as it now stands. So moved. Support. Discussion. All those in favor, please indicate the aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. Susan, did you have something you needed to say? I am not aware of that. Did you have an item or something else you needed to? Me? Mr. Did Lamb is suggesting that something else the needs to be. I don't. I don't know. Did they? Are we going to pull that item? Or? I think we can talk about it when it gets to that item. Is that correct? 
I don't, I was, yeah, I mean that. Okay. Was yeah, that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. right. So that was Susan, supplementary. Sorry. sorry, Mr. President, I'm talking out of order. <laughs> May I? That's all right. That we do a lot of that here as well. from my office was supplementary to item B1. Yeah, I just didn't want her to miss her chance. I don't know. Okay. So we have no public hearings. The agenda items for consideration, financial matters, invoice, register, and bill approval. And before us, Council, we have an in attached invoice register report paid June 14th, 2022, in the amount of $210,451.17, of which $104,150.66 are DDA bills for a net village amount of $106,300.17. Check register report for May 24th of 2022 to 610 June 10th, 2022 in the amount of $36,044.14. And check register report for June 6th, 2022 to June 10th, 2022 in the amount of $13,042.80. I'll make a motion to approve payroll bills paid 524-2022 through 610-2022 of $49,086.94 in the June 14th, 2022 invoice register report in the amount of $210,451.17, of which $104,150.66 are DDA bills for the net village amount of $106,300.17. Support. Any questions from the public? Close that council. Uh, let's see, we've got the motion. Go ahead, deliberation, Ms. Rutt. Yeah, the only, um, I guess, request I would make, I know in the past we've gotten, so on the reports here, we'll see like, you know, staff member credit card, staff member credit card, and in the past we got those credit card printouts of what those were, and I would request that those be um, put back in there so I know what I'm approving if I'm uh, approving a staff member's credit card statement. Council Member Rupp, it's, we've been trying to do that. Okay. We we're working on it. Uh, as you well know, Mr. Young is not yeah. available, so he's the one that ran those reports. Okay. So we're working I didn't know on, if it was something that the treasurer could, we could do as well. On it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. okay, perfect. I Thank you. That, I knew that was going to well. <laughs> Anyone else? Roll call, please. Rutt? Yes. Van Portfleet? Yes. Hobbs? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Um, I miss. Matheson? Yes. Narsh? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. <laughs> Item 2 Budget Amendment General Fund DPW. We have before us communication from the uh, village manager regarding General Fund DPW. The background brief. Attaches a budget amendment for the general fund, DPW fund 125 in the amount of $46,848 to adjust revenues and expenditures with the state budget act. I'll move to approve the general fund DPW 125 budget amendment in the amount of 46,848 as presented to comply with the state budget act at copy which is attached and incorporated as part of the minutes. Support. Discussion from the general public. Closed. Discussion from Village Council. I see 43,000. That's the next. Um, oh, that's three. I'm sorry. I'm yep. sorry. I'm ahead of myself. I'm ahead of myself. Okay. No. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Hobbs? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Narsh? Yes. Van Portfleet? Yes. Matheson? Yes. Rook? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Item number three budget amendment general fund, various departments. Attaches a budget amendment for the general fund for various departments in the amount of $43,000 to adjust revenues and expenditures with the state budget act. Move to approve the general fund various departments budget amendment in the amount of $43,000 dollars as presented to comply with the state budget act a copy of which is attached and incorporated as part of these minutes support open to the public any questions back to council deliberation any questions roll call please 
Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Um, Rutt? Yes. Van Portley? Yes. Hobbs? Yes. Narsh? Yes. Matheson? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you. Item B, other items. Can I, can I run and grab some water before we go on to the next one? Sorry. We'll just pause for a moment. <laughs> You're welcome. Next item is item one, preliminary PUD review and eligibility approval, Mosheri Starboard Redevelopment. I will need some help with this council because I think there's gonna be a couple of different um, discussions on this, but I will read the uh, background brief and then ask for the presentation of the item by the applicant. Dominic Mosheri has submitted a planned unit development PUD request for a preliminary residential development. The starboard de redevelopment PUD consists of four distinct residential areas over 2.9 acres as follows. The starboard residential building number one, four story apartment building with a total of 23 units and covered first floor parking fronting on South Broadway. Item two, the landings at Starbird buildings two, three, four, and five, three-story townhouses with a total of 18, one-bedroom units with two car garages, fronting on both Flint Street and Lake Orion. Building number five also has the potential to be developed with live-work units. Item three, the peninsula at Starboard buildings six, seven, eight, and nine, one and one-half story cottages with two units each, with access off the reconfigured Lake Street and fronting on Lake Orion. Item four, bullet boathouse, two-story, one-unit building fronting on Lake Orion. In addition to the residential component, the existing boat docks frontage on Lake Orion will be improved. The existing boat launch will be improved and made available seasonally for lake residents to utilize. The existing snack bar and gas fuel pump will be enhanced and the existing dock located adjacent to Greens Park will be dedicated to the fire department. No new docks are proposed as part of this project. The first formal step in the PUD process is for Planning Commission to review the application and concept plan to determine if the proposed development satisfies the eligibility criteria in section 11.02 of the zoning ordinance, which are as follows. Item one, provide a recognizable benefit to end users and the community. Item two, not place a burden on utilities, environment, and or adjacent lands. Item three, further the goals and objectives of the master plan. Item four, not result in an unreasonable negative economic impact on adjacent property. Item five, provide as much usable open space as would be required under the ordinance. Item six, reside under single ownership and or control. After reviewing the application, the Planning Commission asked regular meeting of June 6, 2022. The Planning Commission took action. The following action. Moved by Van Portfley, so seconded by Loran. Resolved based on compliance with the section 11.02, qualified conditions for a plan unit development as recommended by our planners and by this Planning Commission to consider to recommend approval of the PUD eligibility to the Village Council for consideration for the Starboard Residential Redevelopment Project. There was five ayes and one nay, and it was, uh, and then there was a recommended motion, and that was to concur with the Planning Commission's recommendation and grant, oh, that's our recommended motion. That's the brief on it. Council, I would like to ask at this point in time um, about myself, about whether or not I should be recused from further discussion. All I participate in tonight was the background brief, which was the village manager's job. And there's been some discussion out there in the public about whether or not I have interest and if I should be removed from further discussion on this matter or not. So, I don't believe I have any, um, 
Uh, in fact, I know I don't have any um, reason to abstain from this one particular development, but I would like to open it up if this would be proper procedure to this board if they have concerns or is it just simply me asking them if they would like me to be recused or not? So, Mr. President, if I may? Yes. Thank you. Um, so if you're raising an issue of a potential conflict of interest, there's usually two types of conflicts, I guess you could say. One, it's obvious, and if you know there's a conflict, you recuse yourself, you step out, and let the rest of the board determine what the matter is. I've heard from you that tonight that it appears that you don't believe you have a conflict, but you're raising it, so the appropriate uh, inquiry from this council would be to uh, determine whether or not you do indeed have a conflict and whether you should recuse yourself. Asking questions, there was a handout provided to council regarding general conflict of interest concerns and just specifically certain questions are uh, such as would you have any pecuniary interest uh, in making a determination on any particular issue? Um, do you have a pecuniary interest in this particular issue? Any overriding personal interests? Um, would you be impacted financially, positively or negatively? Uh, any anticipated foreseeable legal issues? And again, those are some general questions you would ferret out. Uh, I believe in conversations with our office, when you raise a potential or requested our look at it, most of those, all those questions were asked of you and was indicated to our office you didn't have any of those concerns. But again, you're raising it just to put it out there in transparency, it appears, and to uh, maintain uh, an unbiased look at this. So if council deems it appropriate to make a determination of whether or not you have a, a conflict of interest that would require recusal, uh, by in inquiry or if you want to divulge any and all types of uh, questions that, or answers to the questions that I just raised, uh, that would be appropriate to determine to whether or not you have a conflict of interest. And one other thing, sir, is that's the question answer period and if I have any involvement or conflict of interest, but in the information you provided us with, uh, today, which is regarding this PUD review and eligibility approval. It addressed the Planning Commission, but in that it says what to do if you have a conflict of interest. This is a statement made, and it says if you have or are legitimately perceived to have a conflict of interest, when reviewing these steps, keep in mind that the perception of a conflict is just as important as reality. And so that's my concern. I will state that I have no conflict, but perception is reality. That's my concern. Is that not also another factor of that? Correct. And you know, okay. you, you want to maintain the public trust and ensure fairness. Um, so you were provided with the uh, Michigan Associated of Planning Chapter of American Planning <coughs> Association uh, conflict of interest tools. Uh, that is one tool you can use to disclose uh, the fact that, that you don't believe you have a conflict, but again, declare it. Uh, and uh, if, if the board concurs or not, or uh, if you don't believe you have a conflict, and you've declared that and stated the fact that the reasons you don't have a conflict, then uh, you're free to vote on the motion. Mr. Knox. Um, well, I was going to Sorry. kind of go a little bit into that. So if, uh, Mr. President, if you're asking the board to decide if you have a conflict, then I was going to just put my pro tem boots on and step up and then ask our attorney to pose those very questions. If, um, and, and I totally understand the, the appearance, so I'm glad you brought that up, but, it, and it may, to dispel appearance, require answers to those questions and then let this board decide is that what you're requesting 
Oh, that'd be fine by me. Okay. As long as there's a consensus based on the answers. I mean, I don't want to be the inquisit inquisitor here, but I'll be happy to oblige. Yes, and it's my understanding this board will make that decision. So I think out of fairness, I'll ask you to ask those questions, sir. Sure. And then we'll judge those answers uh, for this board. So, and I think the first question was, is there any pecuniary or financial uh, benefit from this project? Did you make a motion, Ken? I'm sorry, Ken. Did, yeah. no. Was there a motion you made to consider something? If that's the direction council wants if that's, to take. If, if that, you want us to go. I, I, since we're just having a little chat, okay. Um, I think you, you, you might be better to just address the planning commission first and then revisit that this at the planning commission instead of we're, well, we're because we're holding these gentlemen up here and i am embarrassed by this another embarrassment i'm embarrassed by what happened at the planning commission and, right. and so let's well let's get these people I, I i uh but if i am determined to have conflict i should be removed from this conversation now correct council correct Right, not let that conversation happen and then get removed later. Well, I, I, we don't level. decide if you have conflict. You have to ask us whether or not you, if you feel you're in conflict, you should ask to be recused. Motion. We don't request to recuse you. You, we're not gonna decide whether you have a conflict of interest. I'm not an attorney and I'm not a judge. And that's why so, I think the purpose of the motion, yeah. sorry to interrupt Mr. Lambert, that's the purpose of the motion for me to ask those questions for him to whether he's going to declare a conflict or not and recuse himself. Please but restate the he motion. wants to be public yeah. about it. Please restate the motion and then we'll. Please. And if there's any additional questions from council, may we ask those after your question? And that's pretty much the motion. So you know what? I'll do this. I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You had a motion? No. Go ahead. Okay. So I'll ask to be recused and then questions could be asked and there'll be a vote taken and if you deem that I should not be recused, that I should serve as uh, a public elected official to the best ability of the people, which I always intend to do, then so be it. So I will make the motion that I get recused. Well, if you make a motion to, you make the decision to recuse yourself. That's what he made, he made a motion to recuse himself. But you can and I well, yes or no. Yeah, correct. So I, I second the motion. He made the motion to recuse himself. Well, that's going right? to be, I think uh, Mr. Narsh made a motion before that. That wasn't necessarily, was there a second to your motion? I don't think so. So you, really what you've done is a substitute motion, uh, Mr. President. Back, I'm going to back up then, <laughs> sir. Mr. Narsh made that motion. Will anybody support Mr. Narsh's motion? My, why, why are you cringing? I'm not, I'm okay. just, nobody <laughs> seconded his motion, so. So, but it's the same motion that I made, you said, sir. No, it's not. He made a motion that I asked questions to determine that would legally uh, put you in a position to determine whether or not you have a conflict of interest. And your motion was to recuse yourself, which would then trigger those questions and then whether or not you would recuse yourself. So is the outcome the same? Yes, okay. exactly. The same. Okay, then I'll support Mr. Narsh's motion. <laughs> All right, and I defer back to our attorney <laughs> to pose the questions to the okay. council president. They need to vote on the motion. What was the motion again? Do you have the attorney pose the questions to Mr. Van Port, please? Just All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? All right. Thank you. So I can make a question now. May I be recognized? So I think I don't the know council name. is the, the motion was to have the council interview. Attorney, that's correct. Pose I'm the question. Ask the questions just so I follow the legal. Could you realities. restate the motion again? So I, I don't see that the motion has a definite ending. So could you restate the motion for me, please? I'm very confused. I'm so sorry. It would just to have the attorney read those questions to. I would like the attorney to restate the motion for me. Please. I didn't make the motion, so I can't restate. Okay, then, Mr. Narsh. <laughs> uh, the motion was to direct the attorney to ask the council president the series of questions as in the Robert rules to determine to allow Mr. Van Portley to determine and have that information come out if there's any pecuniary financial benefit of this particular uh, agenda. 
I say, let's make it simple. Why don't you want to be, why do you want to be recused? <laughs> well, that's the motion. And then it, and I'm just, yeah. I'm just reestablishing the motion and that the attorney would ask the question. And yeah, I, and, and if we can't ask for clarification, if it's just the attorney who can um, ask you questions, uh, there's a reason why this is coming up. And you can say you don't have any pecuniary, you can go through and say all the right answers to the questions, but there's, there's a reason why those questions are being asked. So would we be able to ask questions after counsel? Well, typically when the member raises the conflict, they state what the conflict or potential conflict would be or is. So generally speaking, when you raise a conflict, I have a conflict of interest, council members, because I'm related to the applicant and I can't, I can't sit on this board and make a fair decision because I'm related to them. Or one of the contractors, I have an ownership interest in the contracting company. So usually that disclosure is made by the person claiming a potential conflict to ferret out whether or not there is or is not a conflict. So I don't know if Mr. Uh, Van Portfleet is comfortable stating what his potential conflict may or may not be. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I stated earlier, sir, I don't know of one. Uh, so I'm just allowing the process. And I think next step would be for you to ask me your series of questions per the motion, correct? Absent anything projected out, that was my motion, was to ask those questions to see if there was information. That's Are you the applicant? No. Are you a close relative to the applicant? No. Are you relatives of yours related to any relatives of the applicant that you know of? No. Um, her business associate, lender, renter uh, of the applicant, or any business dealings with the applicant of you or, or your close family or family members? No. Is the applicant a party with whom you have a close tie? No. Would the proposal allow you, a relative, close family member, business associate, or any of your business concern, receive a financial benefit or gain? No. Do you have any pecuniary interest? Would you stand to gain monetarily from voting on uh, this matter? No. Do you have any overriding personal interest, significant personal animosity or goodwill, either way, towards the developer, the development that would interfere with the ability to remain neutral? No. Is there any anticipated or foreseeable legal issues or disputes between you and the applicant or the developer uh, with regard to this proposed project? None. And the conflict of interest uh, you're raising tonight is based off of uh, potential uh, neighboring property? That's correct. And based on um, you owning an interest in a neighboring property, would you be financially uh, affected either positively or negatively by voting on this tonight? No. Not to my knowledge. So I think that's the questions for conflicts that you would examine uh, as a council. I haven't heard any conflicts of interest um, based on the answers received. Obviously, I don't, it's not my legal opinion, uh, Mr. President, that you need to um, recuse yourself. And as an example, I would use that uh, for those of you that maybe sit on a planning commission or a zoning board, just because maybe you own property neighboring an applicant doesn't necessarily automatically recuse you or trigger recusal from uh, that uh, consideration and voting on that member. And I think that's what I've heard here this evening that he happens to own property next to it. Now, if he knew he was going to benefit, that would be a conflict of interest. 
but I've heard none of that this evening. Um, obviously, planning boards, zoning boards uh, hear petitions to those boards on a monthly basis where that involves neighboring properties. That's not a basis for recusal unless one of those other parameters are met, such as an overwhelming financial interest one way or the other, or uh, some obligation, whether personally or otherwise, uh, that would affect your ability. So um, it's, it's my legal recommendation. I've not heard a conflict of interest based on just simply owning property next to, and it's, correct me if I'm wrong, is it this proposed PUD this evening, or is it, it is different? Not. So it's not even this PUD that's, so that's even less of a concern or conflict um, issue or concern that I would have from a legal perspective, Mr. Kemport, please. So at this point, then we go to- May I have a point of order? Did we ever vote on that motion though? No. Yeah. <laughs> because then we have a motion sitting on the table right now. So we have to dispose of it one way or another. I thought no, we, did. we did. We did. There was a vote did. on Mr. Narsha's motion. Yeah. That was, that was my question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, there were so many things going around. I wasn't Would it sure. be then fair to make a motion to allow Mr. Van Fortfleet, based on the question and the answers received, to remain for this I agenda? I think that would be appropriate, and then that would give you an opportunity to deliberate and discuss that. That is my motion. Or Okay, so at this point we would go to this is an agenda item, so we go to the public first, correct? Correct, if you want to open it up to the Any public. Any comments from the public? Close public comment, deliberation, Okay. discussion. Um, so this arises out of your business, Snug Harbor, correct? Correct. Uh, you and it's so much business, not well, Go ahead. it's the property. Property, yeah. yeah. So are you the property owner? I am. Okay. Uh, do you own the um, launch that you use? I do not. And where is that located? Uh, 148 Heights Road. And would that be part of the new development? Um, I don't, I, it's being considered to be that, okay. from my perspective. Okay. And you store your docks on property surrounding Snug Harbor, is that correct? You have docks, there are docks. Let me put it this way. Do you use any other property to store or? I do. Okay, that you don't own? Yes, I have three others. Okay, and where are those? Oxford. All three of them are in Oxford. You don't store anything else on your neighboring property? I'm sorry, I don't store anything else. Any any boats or any part of your business on your the neighboring party property. It's okay. very obvious. You can see it during the winter. Okay, so you store it on the property that's going to be developed. Currently. Currently. Yes, right. And what are your plans for once it's developed? My other three locations. I've already spoken to them about enlarging. Who are them? Capacity. Who are they? I don't know if that's relevant, is it, sir? Uh, uh, the developer? I, I guess what, I'm sorry, point of order. Um, might be more, I think, to the point is, do you anticipate any contractual agreement between yourself in the future and the property owner of any of these PUDs that would come before this board at any point in time? And I would add to that either for storage or use of the launch ramp. I do not. So where would you launch? Uh, DNR. I am a lease holder at the DNR ramp. I have that privilege. Okay, so you're going to start using the DNR ramp. And it's not. And it's not anything new. I have operated that way in the past. There was a previous owner, two owners previous to this one, but I did not use that lot at all nor ramp or anything. My business can function without that. It's not a requirement. Okay, I, I'm just trying to clarify. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not putting this, these questions out there to get people to assume that I know the answer, okay? Um, I, I genuinely did not know all of that. Um, okay, so you're not gonna be, you have plans for use of a new ramp and plans for 
storage if you and you're not going to be going into a contract or entering into a contract? I don't know how I could because if they are going to develop, I can't accommodate that. All of a sudden we go, get everything out of here. How's that work? Okay. And have you met with the developers? I have no, I think the question you may be asking is I have no contractual discussions currently for any property purchase or my inclusion in their development. I've not been approached. And if this does come into fruition, they, they approach you or you approach them, will you disclose that to? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Much like I'm doing tonight. Okay. I'm satisfied. Mr. Land. I would just like to confirm that, that Mr. Van Portfleet has launched my boat out of the DNR ramp on numerous occasions. And uh, he has told me previously that he did not uh, own the ramp where he launched the boat. He's, uh, he told me I used to, he's my, been my mo boat marina guy for many years. So I confirm he knows those facts for him. And like I said, I wasn't putting that out there to make the assumption that I knew the answer. Anything else? Any other council members? We already closed. I'm sorry. I've been scolded tonight about following <laughs> procedure and, and even this five minute debate. I genuinely, always in the past, would say, please, let's hear what you have to say, but I'm not going to allow it tonight. So, we've already closed the public comment. Any other deliberation from this board? Okay. So, we have a motion on the floor. And I am not to vote on this since it involves me? Correct. Okay. So. Let me rephrase the motion. It was to allow Mr. Van Portfleet to stay in del deliberation. And that was supported. Okay. All those in favor, please indicate with aye. 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 Opposed? And I did not vote. Okay. So we can carry on with our business now. It was real important to me. I, I apologize for the duration there, the time taken up. But it's real important for me to get that out into public because there's already some perception. And it's, it's unfair that it, that becomes reality because as you understand from my statements. But all right, moving on. Okay. I had one preliminary PUD review and eligibility approval on Missouri Starboard Development. I've read the brief. Gentlemen, your turn. Welcome. Mr. Mr. Van Port, please. Did I not take care of that properly? You didn't take care of this one. Oh, you're going to get these people very disappointed. Hang on, and hang it's on. Nothing sir. of our doing. No, it's okay. okay. This is the PUD Council. This is from your office, Bar Howlett. This is the agenda item, preliminary PUD review on eligibility approval. Thank you. And we need to discuss this as well. If I may, Your Honor. And Mr. Mosheri, you're Mr. aware of this document. Yes, and may I just speak to it just for 30 seconds before council speaks, is that okay? Um, is that, I think it's acceptable, you agree, sir? <coughs> Go ahead. The process is working. The uh, uh, Planning Commission is a recommending body. There's, there are issues we're gonna discuss in a moment, but we are willing to proceed if the Planning Commission's uh, actions are nullified because of a non-recusal matter and therefore the supermajority vote needs to occur but it is a no no change in zoning was to occur this is just whether we are eligible in a recommendation if that recommendation failed three four for example if there's seven people present we would still come to this body uh, in in the, the case that had occurred uh, there was a there were six members present and it was a 5-1 vote. Uh, there was not a recusal, and the matter will bring it brought up for your council. Uh, so it would be net then 4-1. And understanding that there may be a supermajority when it comes to zoning, but a zoning action didn't occur. There was a recommendation to move this to 
the council by which the eligibility for the PUD. And for a PUD to occur, which is a, a zoning, uh, you need a supermajority, recognize that. But those were several steps away from that. So I will just sit, th sit, that was just my point, that even if we were to fail that motion, we would still be before you here this evening, regardless of the technicality and for your consideration for the eligibility. And then before I come back up, I would like, after your council reflects on this matter with, with, with yourselves, that Ms. Laura Haw, who is the professional planner with McKenna, that she do the review uh, for the plan, and I'll talk about the benefits and the changes that we made since we met with the Planning Commission, because we do listen, and we made a lot of substantial changes to uh, make the plan better, to lower the density, and I'll get into all that later, but I think you have this technical issue to resolve first. But again, we would be before you re whether that motion failed or succeeded, regardless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Well said. Council? Um, thank you. Like you said, well said. I don't know if I could say it any better or expand on it. You have two pieces of information from the, my office, one indicating that based on what we believe to have been a conflict from one of the planning board members, that in essence it was a no vote. Uh, or a vote that didn't recommend to this council approval, but the petitioner is absolutely right. They have every legal right to be before this. This is the deciding board. That's simply a recommendation. Uh, the first piece of information sent to you uh, suggested that we maybe fix that error. It's not legally mandatory that we go back and fix that error, although the compelling and overwhelming lawyer in us in, you know, wants to make sure that things are done right and appropriately, and thus it was our recommendation we should go back and have them represent to the, uh, the Planning Commission with an appropriate quorum. And, and just, I think the important thing to take away from that whole thing is, uh, for those of you uh, council members that are on the Planning Commission, according to what we found, um, you always need five votes of the Planning Commission to approve anything. So whether you have six people there, nine people there, you always need five people regardless uh, to vote yes to make a recommendation uh, to this council. So with that in mind, um, they are free, had council or had the Planning Commission, which in essence is before you today, voted to not recommend this eligibility and keep in mind, again, he, I, the applicant stated it much more eloquently than I did. Uh, this is just the eligibility determination, the initial step. Uh, the bigger steps are yet to come and uh, it is within the right if they were, or the recommended motion from Planning Commission was to deny, uh, they could still come before this board and ask for approval of the request to approve the eligibility, and I think that's exactly what they're asking tonight. Uh, so from a legal perspective, there is no issue for them presenting. I imagine there's members here from the public that would like to maybe speak on this matter, so it would be inappropriate, quite frankly, to probably pull it off the agenda to prevent those members the opportunity to speak before, for or against this uh, item. Thus, um, even though we still overwhelmingly believe we'd love to fix what occurred, had we known ahead of time, we would have headed off uh, ahead of time. Unfortunately, that did not occur, so we're left with what we are here today. So uh, if they want to move forward, I suggest you move forward and, uh, with the presentation and a possible motion. Mr. Narch. And this PUD in this process is going to return to the Planning Commission uh, at some point, um, just so the public understands that. Though there was a parliamentary issue earlier, we can legally move forward. We are moving forward. Um, this issue will return to the Planning Commission, I believe, more than once as this uh, process goes through. So it will go back uh, to the Planning Commission. And with public hearings at that Point. At least on the other ones, and I'd refer to the planner on that one, uh, McKenna. Right. I know Planning Commission, and they did comply with their statutory duty and conduct a public hearing. Uh, it was not the public hearing that was at fault. It was the, the vote that was at fault that uh, puts us in that kind of quandary, albeit legally you can still move forward, but uh, 
For sure they will have to come and have public hearings for the other PUDs they're proposing. Uh, um, I would leave it to the expert planners on that, but I know this is just the first step for council consideration. And I, and I say that because I wanted the public to understand this will return to the Planning Commission, but it was not any fault of Mr. Machuri uh, or his staff as uh, to uh, an error that may have occurred. So should we consider at this time a motion to hear the, no? I don't think it's necessary to do a motion. It's on the agenda. They've indicated their interest in moving forward. So I, don't, I, I would recommend you treat it like any motion or any agenda item uh, for the approval of the eligibility requirements. Okay. Uh, and then the council can debate and uh, vote on that after the presentation. Okay, then I would like to go next to Mr. Mosheri. Would you like additional opportunity now or would you like to allow our, the planner from McKenna to participate? I believe you mentioned. I, I would prefer the professional planner who represents the village. I'd just like to bring up five bullet points, if I may. Um, first of all, thank you. And I want to thank the Planning Commission for listening and then we listened back. And we made some significant changes for consideration to bring back to the Planning Commission after if the council determines that we are eligible. Now we're just as old eligibility. So we go back to Planning Commission if it's affirmed that we are eligible to proceed with the PUD process. So the first thing that we listened in regards to density. We took off the bottom lands, because that became a question where the bottom lands can be counted or not. Well, they can be counted in the MU zoning, but not in the PUD. So why debate it? We took the bottom lands out of our net acreage to get the density. And so we are using the density permitted in the ordinance without any bonus. Very critical. We're not seeking any bonus density. And we're netting out the bottom lands. Um, that was a very good point brought up by Mr. Lamb, who's on both the Planning Commission and the Council. And also there's some consternation in regards to preservation. Well, we are preserving the Sutherland home on Flint Street, and it's the integral part of our plan now with a community garden, and also there's some concerns about the uh, cottages fronting onto Flint Street uh, that would be more forward than the historic home that we're gonna preserve now. And we pushed everything back to be even or further back than the current residents on Flint Street. That's very important. And the third most important thing was the, uh, along, we call it the landings, along the boardwalk, where we currently, there's currently 106 lineal feet of building, uh, 35 feet deep, representing uh, 3,710 square feet of pad space along the boardwalk, but it's directly on the water, one inch from the water's edge. We have pushed back 13 to 15 feet from the boardwalk, and, and, and even further, if you count the boardwalk, up to 20 feet, and we are the exact same square footage on the pad. We are uh, 150 feet by 25 feet, so it's 3,750 feet, and the other is 3,700 and 50 plus minus feet also. So I just wanna bring those to the attention because we're listening to what the Planning Commission was discussing, even though they weren't reviewing the plan. They were seeing whether we're eligible. But we're saying, okay, let's make sure we're super eligible. Let's take the consternation out and let's be in part and parcel with this community. Um, we want to be able to welcome the community, to use the boardwalks, to have that large green space now we're proposing along M24 Broadway and the realignment of Flint Street, Lake Street, and M24 and having that safe, new safe access uh, is very key. Um, and then the water quality issues, one more thing that we added was we added the, uh, the electric motor uh, charging stations and we had done some very large communities in Northville where we had 424 homes, nothing, this, this is 40, it's 424. We're, of the 424, over 300 were on the water, all electric motors. 
Now, of course, not the same horsepower that you'd have in our sports lake, but very quiet, peaceful enjoyment, water quality. And we're all about the water quality here for uh, Lake Orion. So thank you very much. And I'd like to have Laura Haw take over the five criteria by which we are eligible. So thank you very much. And I don't have anything else to add unless I'm asked to come up to the podium. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Ms. Hall. Thank you. Good evening, council members. Um, would it be helpful if I um, pull the plan on the screen for the Please. public to, to view as well? Are you able to see that on the screen? It's showing up, yep. Yeah. We have nothing on these screens here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just warming up. Please feel free to stop at any point. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions on the review. Um, so um, as was previously explained, um, this is eligibility request for a planned unit development, a PUD, and this is really the first initial step in the process. This plan is gonna go back to the Planning Commission, uh, likely at least two more times. There will be a public hearing. There's gonna be you know, getting into the weeds of the plan, the facade design, the building materials, the landscaping. This is really determining does this project meet the PUD eligibility criteria and can it move forward? This project will also have to come back to Village Council. Um, so this isn't the last time that you will see um, this proposal either. Um, with that said, the applicant has been working on this concept for a while now with the village. They've presented um, different concepts to the village administration um, going back to May. In June, they were before the Planning Commission, of course. Um, public comment was also made at that meeting. Uh, there were three residents that came and spoke in favor of this project. They discussed, um, or they shared, that they feel that this uh, current area is an eyesore, that this will bring um, value to the community and is a quality development. Um, so since, well, as the applicant discussed, since the meeting last week, the Planning Commission meeting, they have made several changes um, rather significantly to the plans to address some of the feedback they heard. So. They have um, essentially eliminated one entire building. The former building number four has been um, removed. They've uh, lost a number of residential units. They've recessed buildings one and two, which are these two buildings right here along West Flynn Street. They've pushed them further south to create a more uniform streetscape. Um, they have uh, eliminated a curb cut that was previously proposed in front of building one here on South Broadway. Um, and they have incorporated um, uh, additional programmable green space as well as um, some public art installation areas. So since the uh, site plan that was provided in the, in the council packet, the applicant has also made some further adjustments to the plan today which has resulted um, in pretty much the same building configuration, but they have lost six additional units. Um, so in total now, this project is only proposing 40 residential units. 22 of those residential units are in building one. This is a four-story apartment building. The first floor is covered parking, um, and it presents a nice gateway onto Broadway and Flint Street. Uh, the landings area here, uh, these are those three-story townhomes that maintain the typical street front yard setback. Uh, as the applicant mentioned, they're gonna be um, renovating the existing home here to fit into the architectural styles of the neighborhood. Building number four is another uh, three-story townhome building. These have the potential to be used as live-work units. 
And then the peninsula area here, these are uh, one and two story, or one and a half um, and one story cottages um, with two or one units. Um, there's also the renovation of the boathouse here as one additional residence. All of the boat docks um, uh, along the perimeter of the site um, are going to be repaired. They're not creating any new docks as part of this project. The existing snack shop building will be renovated as well as the fuel pump area. And the snack shop building will now um, offer a ADA accessible restroom for the public. They will be donating this dock to um, public safety. And the existing boat, uh, boat launch here, excuse me, um, will be renovated um, for seasonal use. So on um, packet page 165, this is where we start to list out the five eligibility criteria for a PUD. And in our opinion, the PUD, as it's proposed, exceeds the requirements of the zoning ordinance. So I won't go through these one by one, but I would like to um, highlight some of the key benefits and reasons why this project exceeds the minimum PUD eligibility. So the first is that while there are limited features to preserve on this property as it is largely developed, um, the realignment of Lake Street and Flint Street will be adding um, some view sheds uh, to enhance the community. Uh, the architectural renovations um, to the existing residence, snack shop, boathouse, um, will also be um, a preservation mechanism. Um, this project offers a variety of market rate residences. Um, so there will be apartments, townhouses, cottage, uh, the existing single family home, of course, will be renovated. And within these different housing types, um, there are a mix of one and two and three bedroom units. There's also the opportunity for the live work units that I mentioned, which is another uh, more missing middle type of housing to offer the community. And then of course, there's um, the snack shop and the fuel pump um, with the public accessible restroom um, that will be enhanced. Um, the, the fourth key um, aspect of this project is that 37% of the area will be preserved as open space. Um, that is well above the minimum required of 10% under a PUD. Um, they are also offering a variety of open space amenities. Um, so for instance, uh, there has now been a connection provided to Greens Park. There are two um, alt art installation areas that are proposed. Uh, the applicant has uh, expressed interest in this area here along South Broadway with the connection to Greens Park being used as uh, programmable um, spaces, perhaps for temporary events. Um, they are um, uh, uh, renovating the boardwalk and will be providing um, benches, seating areas along. And they are proposing a terraced garden here adjacent to the existing single family home, um, a community garden. In addition to those amenities uh, directly on the site, uh, they'll also be enhancing the streetscape along both Flint and South Broadway, um, which is a benefit to the public realm. Um, there will be a lot of consistency added with that. Um, sixth, um, or the, the sixth main finding is that uh, the redevelopment with the stormwater infiltration um, system that they're adding will significantly mitigate the water runoff into the lake and pollution. Uh, there will also be a reduction in impervious surface as a result of this project um, from what's there today. They are proposing green infrastructure. Um, the applicant noted the electric charging stations, so they're proposing six um, watercraft charging stations and three uh, vehicular charging stations within the parking garage itself. Uh, they're also proposing bike racks. So these are all um, examples of green infrastructure that is recommended but not required. Um, 
One of the most significant and transformative benefits with this project is the realignment of Lake Street and Flint Street. And it is unlikely that without a PUD that ties, I think there's approximately 12 different parcels that are associated with this development, without that PUD that ties those parcels together, it's unlikely that such a realignment would occur. And that realignment really ensures both vehicular and pedestrian safety for years to come. Um, that's a, a permanent lasting improvement um, that is a direct benefit with the PUD. Um, one of the items that um, we also find is a significant benefit um, that is a part of the recommended motion this evening is that the applicant has eliminated that curb cut that was previously proposed on South Broadway into building one. So now the only curb cut, or the only access uh, to the site will be from Flint Street itself. And this is a, a benefit in terms of pedestrian safety, but also vehicular safety. MDOT would not permit the creation of a new curb cut here due to safety reasons. Um, it's understood that um, emergency access is still um, desired by the fire department for this area um, with the curb cut. We strongly recommend um, that that not be the case. Uh, all the buildings, including building one, are fully sprinkled. Um, we think there are some alternatives if there's concerns about accessing the property without having that curb cut and maintaining the green space and following the recommendations of MDOT for traffic safety. Lastly, um, a majority of this site is planned as mixed use transition on the future land use map of the master plan. And uh, that really calls for a mix of uh, local commercial and residential, particularly missing middle residential. So not just single family housing, but a mix of townhouses, live work units, apartments, which is exactly what this um, proposed PUD achieves. Um, so on packet page 167, we do provide a recommendation um, that based on compliance with section 11.02 of the zoning ordinance um, and based on the recommendation of approval from the planning commission and the um, public comment that was heard in favor of this project, uh, we recommend that Village Council grant PUD eligibility approval of the proposed Starboard Residential Redevelopment Project, contingent that no vehicular access, that is a curb cut, um, be provided from South Broadway Street to Building One. And happy to answer any questions that you might have tonight. Thank you for your time. Council, I have two. You say PUD approval is eligibility. Correct. Right, again, it's eligibility. This is so that a continuation of design and development can continue. Correct. There is much to still be massaged with the site plan, many details to finalize. Okay. And then uh, secondarily, uh, the applicant has reduced their density to 40, which does not require any additional add on the PUD. My point is, is the PUD is really not regarding density. There's other benefit features and what are they? As, what, as to why the applicant would select a PUD? That's correct. Um, well, there's flexibility in terms of um, parking, um, which the applicant is not asking for a deviation either. They, ha they, are, uh, they have more parking than required by the zoning ordinance. Um, one of the items would be setbacks, though. So, for instance, along West Flint Street, they have recessed those front, um, front porches a bit to be in line with the residential street or closer to, um, but they're still not 25 feet setback. So that would be, you know, one consideration by the commission, or by the, the council, excuse me. Thank you. Any other questions from this commission? From the council? Yes, Ms. Rock. Um, not so much questions, but um, some comments. Um, so I see that there is a 
paved emergency access into Greens Park. And just speaking on behalf of the Parks Committee, who they, some of them watched the Planning Commission meeting or looked at some of these, um, and for myself, who's on the, the Advisory Committee, we're pretty opposed to paving part of our parks just because we struggle. We don't even have the current number of recommended acres of parkland. I mean, certainly, if there needs to be access, drive over our grass, we do not care. Um, get through the gate, drive over the grass. Um, along with the fact that we have planned a pavilion for that site, um, I'd rather see you guys provide a pavilion than a save your money on the asphalt, put a pavil pavilion there, leaving space for access. I don't mind that gate access there, but drive over the grass. If there's an emergency, I, I don't care about the grass. How about, how about a good, how about grass creek? We will put grass pavers, uh, pavers and then put grass over top of it. Let's make it safe, permanent, but cover it and not have, we'll make it, uh, what they say, uh, permeable, not impervious. And so the grass pavers serve as two purpose. You'll still be able to per permeate into the ground for, for water quality, uh, but also for safety, it'll be hard so no vehicles will get stuck. So we will propose, when we get to that detail, uh, grass crete. And okay. I think you'll be very satisfied with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other question, just I, I don't own a boat. I'm not on the lake. I sometimes take my paddleboard. Um, is there a plan? Because I know currently these docks are rented out by people who have, some of them rented them for years. Is there a plan to help transition them or give them a date, a cutoff type of? There'll be a transition for that before, you know, by the time we do engineering, start construction, uh, we're well over a year away. This, the whole 2023 season uh, will remain uh, unchanged for those current people that are uh, leasing those slips. But we plan on having those slips being private for the residents of the starboard community. And there'll be a transition phase, but uh, we're going to decrease the boat traffic. We want to take care of the residents that are currently living uh, on Lake Orion to pr continue to help provide their, putting their boats in and taking them out, but to that extent only. No daily rentals, uh, no daily slip coming in for a friend's boat that, oh, by the way, uh, I'm on the water, but now I want my friend to come join me. No, it's not for that purpose. It's for the very seasonal, you know, late May, uh, to, to put the boat in and then in late September to take your boat out to help assist that because of the potential overcrowding with what goes on at the um, DNR, but this to those help that they're on the lake currently. Um, the one thing I do want to comment on just to so to be noted, we are much further than the uh, 15 feet or less than 20, we're from the property line. But to Flint Street itself, we are over 25 feet. We're 26 feet, we're 27, we're 29 feet to the curb. But you have to measure from the property line, which is the proper thing to do. Um, but we we clearly not uh, encroaching beyond that distance of the existing home. And across the street, we follow the same pattern. It doesn't show on this board, uh, but it shows on, which one doesn't show on it? The houses across the street on the north side of Flint Street. We have, it's, we do have one. We'll supply that at a later date. But, so this is, these are details for another time, but do we, are we eligible mm -hmm. to proceed? And we're trying to show the goodwill that um, as we get more into the process, um, the reasons for the PUD have cl clearly are setback peculiarities uh, and because of water. There we go. It shows the, if you could, Nancy, those are approximately the same distance on the north side of Flint Street as they are on the south side as our proposal. I have nothing else to add. I just want to clarify that one point. We are, oh, and also in buildings uh, two and three, they are two stories from Flint Street. They're three stories from Lake Street because they, everyone parks beneath. So from Flint Street, it'll, it'll match the same height as the current residences along Flint Street. We don't want to exceed that. We want to match the charm and bring it and revive that charm along Flint Street. So we don't want to be intrusive upon that. So again, those are two stories from Flint, three from the rear, everyone parks underneath. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. William. Oh, I, I want to thank Mr. Mosheri for addressing almost every comment that I made in the Planning Commission meetings, including the reducing the density to, to maximum uh, 15 units per acre, uh, doing his best to move the buildings back on Flint Street so that when you enter 
the neighborhood, you'll have some consistency with the look as you drive down the street. Um, I concur with uh, Councilman Rutt, Councilperson Rutt, Teresa, about the park. I would rather see a, you know, some kind of a continuation of the parking lots in the front of the park connecting into your area if you need another emergency access point and then maybe helping develop the park into a, uh, a nicer place for the, all these residents. And then uh, my last thing about the boat launch, I, public boat launch, this, this doesn't have anything that looks like a public boat launch. This would be such a disaster of maneuvering vehicles. I think you should keep it private. And all those parking lot, little parking lot islands you got there where they put the trees and the grass that everybody hates, I'd remove those so that if you're planning on bringing boats and trailers then they can at least maneuver through your parking area. But that's, we can talk about that in the planning commission. It's, those are my comments. And we have, I, I, those I, I have do been wanna, brought forward. I, I do wanna correct something from my ignorance. I met with Mr. Campbell today and they do not allow the public to back their boats in there. What they have is a high-low that has easier maneuverability so it would be the same it would not we would not allow uh, the public to back their own trailer in there it would be from an assist from an assistance standpoint they have a special high low that has a a bumper hitch that has a different turning radius so this is not to have their own vehicles back the boats in there but through a, a assistance by which we would have our management assist those. So it's not a public boat launch per se, but it would assist those uh, in, in the interim as a transition. And it's something we didn't even think about, but the transition is likely and inevitable because we're not gonna be under construction uh, next summer. It's gonna take us that long to get to our engineering and our approvals and all the, the state and county uh, regulations. So there's gonna be that one year transition. I just want to make, I don't believe this is appropriate location for a public boat launch. Okay. So if you're, as your facility and, develops. And we'll look, go in those details for as part of the PUD agreement at stage, four stages from now. All right. Th thank you. All right. And I'd like to add, sir, as well as you meeting all of the suggested items from the Planning Commission members, the other one was from different count Planning Commission members was preservation of the 125 year old home that's there. There was, in the boat launch was discussed at that time too. Thank you very much for your efforts. Anything else, Laura? No, How about anybody else, council members? I'm gonna make a motion to concur with the- I, I would oh, like to go open ahead. it up to Sorry. the public. Oh. Yes, podium please. State your name and address. Sure. My name is Annette Benor. I live at 67 Crescent Avenue. So I wanna just make sure I got this correct. Building two and three are gonna be two story? Correct. Okay. From, from Lake Street. Flint Street. From, from Flint, Flint Street. From Flint Street, thank you. Okay, and then, you know, I really like the fact that you're trying to decrease the boat traffic that we've been seeing on the lake. So my question to you is, you're gonna have 40 units total in this whole development. Now, how many, are they going to be um, full ownership of the docks coming with the condos, um, the apartments, the home, how is that going to work? And then um, are you gonna allow, well, let's say some people have two boats for home, how are you going to work that? Because if let's say you have 40 units, and let's say people have two boats, which is not unrealistic, that's 80 boats. How are we going to work? How are you going to work that? And how is? Do you have a, like the dock? I know you said you're going to revamp the docks and fix them up. So my question to you is, what will be your limit and the number of boats allowed per unit? Is it proper to address this, uh, Mr. Chair? If you would like to, sir. Yeah, uh, briefly, uh, we are not increasing any uh, boat slips, and we have a one-to-one -one ratio right now. Uh, there are 40 slips right now. Actually, I think there's 40, but there'd be less, too, with the public safety. Not everybody on the water owns a boat. 
not everyone has two, but it'll first priority comes to one, and then if there's excess capacity, because not if someone in, in, resides in building one, does not wish to have a boat, but they just like to have a paddle board uh, and or some other, or, or kayak, um, they may not have a motorized boat. And so it gives an opportunity for, uh, on a wait list, that's someone that would have a second boat. Um, I live most of my time, even though my permanent residence here in, in Oakland Township, spend most of my time in northern Michigan, and uh, I've been there 34 years, and I have no motorized cra watercraft. I have a kayak, a paddle board, and a canoe. And so not everybody has a motorized vehicle, but for those that may want a second one, it's first priority one-to-one -one for the residents that'll be there in the starboard. Those are great questions. Dedicated to the residents. That is correct. correct. Anyone else, Mr. Stevens? Mr. Stevens, come on up. And, uh, we are not gonna have request any abatements Special assessment districts, because my mama said, never partner with the government. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am wondering if these slips, docks, uh, which are legal under the current Campbell ownership, is that transfer immediately to the new ownership, or does there have to be new applications for docking at this? Just a question, I don't know. Are the units all for sale, owner-occupied type properties? Um, glad to hear about the marina and the docking and the controls you're going to be putting onto the ramp, uh, and particularly like the little hilo idea because some of us don't back up very well, Ken, and <laughs> not like you. Um, little concerned with the shrubbery and stuff that we have at the corner of Flint and 24 uh, for sight lines uh, as, as we go into the traffic area there that I think we have to be concerned about sight lines uh, in that. And likewise, as we come out of uh, Lake Street onto Flint Street that we got uh, decent sight lines. Lastly, uh, Time and time again, we refer to M24 as South Broadway. South Broadway, to my understanding, is the main drag going through Lake Orion, not M24. M24 is called Lapeer Road, Park Boulevard, or M24. Nitpicking, but a little detail. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Sharon Sedlak, 51 Crescent Avenue. Um, my question is, I didn't think it was, it was answered completely with how many boats are going to be available? You know, regardless of what he says, I live in Lake Orion. Everybody's got two boats, everybody's got kayaks. You can't just say they're definitely gonna have, everybody's gonna want one boat. How many boat are the limit, the legal limit for each residence to have? Is that in your building? Mr. Chairman, I don't want to. If you have any more questions, let's have all the questions and I'll answer one at a time. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to hear Are there to any more that. questions that she may have, then I will address those questions. That was the only question, is okay. living on Lake Orion, realizing if you drive around Lake Orion on a boat, you will see there's two, four, six, whatever, there's a lot of motor boats out there. A lot of them sadly are wakeboard boats. As a homeowner with a seawall, I worry about how much traffic is gonna be out there, especially with the bigger boats, with the wakeboard boats. How many boats are going to be allowed in your whole development? And I'll Thank you. And Mr. Mosheri said he'll gladly address that. Thank you. He would what? He'll gladly address okay, that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the, uh, we're not extending the length of the docks, and uh, there are not 40 docks. Uh, there's uh, something like 20, of which then there's a boat on either side of it. So 40 is, is our limit based on the capacity of the design. 
Uh, we're not going to double tandem them and have them float out there where there's no mooring that'll be done. Uh, and uh, everybody would like two boats. Not everybody can afford two boats. And if they have and want two boats, I guess they're going to have to put the other second boat somewhere else. Uh, it's, we're going to take our first priority, and, and we do want to calm the, the traffic down. We understand the quality of life that you've come to expect living on Lake Orion. I also understand the frustrations that you may have uh, with jet skis. I call them mosquitoes in the water. Uh, and we want to quiet uh, down that traffic with both the noise level with the electric motors, the water quality with the electric motors, and not having, uh, having less fuel potentially spill into the water. Um, and we are very pleased with the uh, number of slips that have been granted, uh, and just it's a coincidence that the slips happen to match the number of residents. That's purely coincidental. Right, and just again to re to remind everyone, this is an eligibility yes. request tonight. This will go back to the planning commission. It'll have public hearings. There's a lot of additional work to be done. That is correct. This is the eligibility, so then we can now do the hard work afterward if the council so selects that we proceed. Any other public? Yes, sir. Yep. Tom Williams, I own uh, 167 South Andrews. My picture window is going to be looking right at this whole thing here. Um, it looks pretty good to me, I mean, just on the on the pictures, but limiting the number of boats on that 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 can go in this place is 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 going to be really critical. Um, every time that somebody puts a boat dock on this lake, it only reduces the value of my property. Like those forty them forty slips or whatever it is at Pelton's point. that took that took property value away from me. and it took, uh, it took, you know, uh, uh, the stream of money going to you guys down as well, because those people that get into those into those slips would much rather only pay four thousand dollars for one of those slips versus five hundred thousand for a, for a house on the lake. I bought a house on a lake because I wanted a boat on the lake. If these folks are renting these slips, this is ridiculous because it's taking money away from me and you guys and the community. You know, I mean, the, 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 the current money stream going to you guys would be a heck of a lot higher if these people would quit on the whole lake, would quit renting out all these slips because then my property becomes more valuable when, when there's only, because there's only a limited number of houses on the lake. And, uh, you know, based on, uh, you know, the number of houses, the property value will go up if people can't get on the lake because they'll, instead of renting these slips, they'll have to buy a house to get on the lake. And that's the way it works. I mean, I, I think this looks great, but what actually comes about, I, I just hope that they limit the number of docks. And I think that something should be done at Pelton's Point because those people are paying taxes probably a quarter of what I'm paying because that's a vacant lot and I got a house and I'm, I'm paying, you know, I don't, I, I can't uh, homestead the property because I actually don't live on the lake. I put a boat on the lake, I buy a house on a lake. That's the way you do it. Like these uh, renting, renting, a, uh, renting this stuff out is, is just beyond my imagination. That's all I got to say. Thank Thanks. You. Mr. Mosheri, any comment? Are you good, sir? I, th um, I think the part I, I, I understand his concern, and right. we're not adding any additional uh, docks for the starboard. Um, and it's expensive to live in, on the water. Right. And there's privileges that go with it. So thank right. you. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Meshack. Hello, everybody. Sean Maychak, 36 Highland Avenue. Uh, it's really not a question for Mr. Mosheri. Thank you very much. You've done a great job presenting your information and your data. This gets to something we talked about the last time we were all together, the keyholing. So 
I like the idea of limiting the access to the homeowners, but where are the, or where are the displaced renters going to go after 2023? What is the DNR going to do? What is the local community going to do from a law enforcement standpoint of protecting the lake from additional keyholing? So you're gonna have 40 or more boats with looking for a home to go that don't live on the lake, that don't pay taxes, that will create an overcrowded, overpopulated situation that's bad enough as it is right now. So I would like to know what the organization in front is going to do to support the key holding situation on this lake. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Would the boat docks that you're going to be, you know, building or presenting, having 40 per unit, are would they going to be deeded? Would you, would you put are they going to be deeded boat docks? No, they will not be deeded. Okay. And then the other thing I have to ask is, you keep bringing up electric boats. Are you going to have specific requirements for people that buy these residents that they're only allowed to buy electric boats? No. So there may be actually no electric boats. It's an option. Okay. All right. That's what I needed. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? We'll close public. Bring it back to this board. I'll make a motion to concur the Planning Commission's recommendation, grant PUD eligibility approval for the starboard residential redevelopment as it satisfies the criteria in section 11.02 of the zoning ordinance. Support. Mr. Chair, may yes. I make a friendly uh, suggested amendment? <laughs> yes, please. Take out the portion of, uh, of uh, approval or recommended approval by the Planning Commission. As we sit here today, we don't have that. So I'd ask that you take that out of your motion if you're so inclined. I'll make that uh, as a part of my motion to remove that uh, instead that uh, I make a motion that the council recommend grant and grant PUD eligibility approval. I'll make my support. Thank you. All right. Any further discussion? I'd like roll call, please. Yes. Van Port, please. Yes. Hobbs. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Luxinger. Yes. Matheson. Yes. Narsh. Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. As I said, the hard work now begins. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to suggest, if everybody wouldn't mind, could we just have like a two-minute recess? Is that good by you, Council? Hurry up. Time's running out. Two-minute recess, please. Bye. We'll reconvene right now.
to request for public docks at Greens Parks and Permits. The brief on this is request for public docks at Greens Parks and Permits. Quotes to add up to three public docks at Greens Park as supported by the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee and in the Parks and Recreation Master Plan are attached. The demand for public dock permits, which the first 150 were sold out in February, now has a waiting list of over 100 plus names. The permit fees are $50, which total $7,500 for the 150 sold this year. The previous years, since 2018, 150 permits also sold out quickly, generating $3,750 at $25 each. I, I, I will debate that. The funding of the docks was presented to the DDA board at their May 10th meeting, and it was denied based on the funding availability from permit sales. It was suggested that until the additional docks are in, that existing public docks be not permitted, or I'm sorry, open with no permit until 5 p.m. daily. That's a suggestion. All right, Ms. Rutt. I'm a little unclear why this is, it's my understanding that at our last council meeting, we voted to purchase the docks and the request was for the DDA to um, fund the creation of that walkway to, from the docks to the access to the docks with a gate kind of closed off. I was under the understanding that we approved the purchase, purchase of it because we have the funds in there. So I'm, I'm a little unclear. Either I misunderstood <coughs> something at our last council meeting or something was translated incorrectly to the DDA because I thought this was, the purchase of the docks was a done deal though should have been ordered for delivery the end of this month, the middle of next month and then the request was for the DDA to create that access because the park is open dawn to dusk, to create that access point with a gate that could be locked at dusk, um, or, to se or to separate it from the park so that it could maintain open access, sorry. Maintain open access and then, um, yeah, so the park could be closed at, at dusk. So I'm a little unclear because, uh, for the reasons. All right, Mr. Narsh. This is a little I, bit unconventional. Typically, we would start with a motion. I've got a motion, for you. Discussion. Got a motion. So I'm just saying because, uh, again, some people get upset with the way we do it. Got a motion. I'm sorry. I thought we were doing discussion, comment, then motion. I got a motion. I'll leave it to you. Uh, I have an answer for that, which I can do after the motion, so it doesn't. Well, why don't we just do the motion? Go ahead, sir. I move to table this item till the next meeting, so that. Teresa can get all her questions answered by Joe when he gets out of the hospital. I can answer that question. I'm going to support that because a couple of these things don't quite add up as well. Go ahead, Mr. Narch. Um, well, I wanted to commend Councilmember Brett for somebody who actually remembered what I said. That rarely happens. Um, that was my motion. Uh, was for the village to go ahead and purchase the docks and approach the DDA about the walkway because I made the motion and that was my intent was to buy the docks and get it moving. Um, but if you want to continue uh, with yours, uh, Mr. President, that's fine. Or Mr. Lambs. Uh, Ms. Washington. Yep, and since the docks have not been purchased yet, um, it was brought to my attention that these are um, 20 foot docks. Now most of the boats that use the docks, I mean I haven't sat out there with my checklist, but um, they're over 25 feet. A lot of the pon new pontoon boats are over 25 feet. Anyway, would there be any way since we have not ordered them yet to look into getting docks that are longer? Well, we have a motion before us, and I do recall that the one that you did make before. So, Ms. Rutt. So just as a clarification point, if that was his motion, then we should be purchasing the docks regardless of whatever, like. Agreed, but we need to get, wait for Joe to get okay. back to find out why we have this before us this evening. I mean, I'm comfortable not tabling it and just remaking that motion to do what we said we were going to do, but. Because otherwise, this is going to sit there and 
drag on until the end of summer. And we've been telling people, yes, we have more docks coming. And these aren't additional docks for people to get a boat slip. These are the public docks for people on the lake to come up to and walk into town. Okay, so, so you'd like to move it along. I'll amend my support. Mr. Lamb, would you um, consider amending your motion? No, we need to just wait to give it another week or just. It'll be two weeks before it comes back. Before yeah, it'll be two weeks before we're going to buy some 20-foot docks that Sarah says are too short, and then somebody else, we need a fence. We're going to have drunks walking around in the park after dark because as soon as you put the docks out there, people are just going to park there. I think we should get this all resolved into a unified thing before we go buy anything. But that's my motion, so just table it till Joe gets back and you work out all the details. I'm anybody, surprised. I, I, I removed my support. Anybody support that? I'll support. <laughs> I can't. Okay. Any other deliberations? Uh, I'm sorry. Council com or, uh, public comments yet, sir? Thank you. And I should have allowed that again. I apologize. It's all right. We're here. trying to move things along <laughs> a little bit. Don Connery, 745 Central Drive. I, I just want to reiterate what. Uh, was stated by Sarah. The boats, pontoon boats, 23, 25 feet, ski boats, 23 feet, 20 foot of dock. You need a foot or two off the front of it. You've got to tie off of the back cleat of the boat. I've got a permit previously and for this year, and I've got a pontoon boat. It's very difficult to tie off the back of the pontoon boat to the dock. You've got a better chance of people falling in the lake, which I'm sure you don't want to have that or any liability associated with it. <clears throat> Get a dock section that's a minimum of 25 feet, preferably 30, so you've got a couple feet in front of the boat and a couple feet behind the boat. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hello again, Sean Maychak, 36 Highland. Mr. Darsh, you're absolutely correct. I remember your your <laughs> statement, your vote, what we all agreed upon. My, my, my question is, what was in the quote? 20 feet or 10 feet? And I just noticed in the paperwork, when the original motion was granted to purchase, it was with walk on water. And now I saw a quote from a different company in the, uh, in the minutes. So who are we going to go with and what's in the quote in terms of dock length? Thank you very much. Anyone else? Close call the public. Come back to the council. And so we have uh, a motion before us to postpone till next meeting. I just or until, actually it's the correct statement is until Mr. Young is out of the hospital, which there's no guarantee about that even for the next meeting. But I'd be happy to amend till next meeting. Ms. Rutt. Do we know how long are the docks at the current uh, public docks um, is question number one. And question number two, my assumption is that the 20-foot docks are probably based on either the current length I, that or I'm wondering because I know our DPW director met with the DEQ about the docks and locations and stuff and I'm wondering if it's based on their recommendation as well. It, it does say four by ten. So. I'm sorry, it says what? It, it does say four by ten. So it, the, this quote is for four, four or for ten foot docks. Expanded. But there are six sections, so four by ten foot sections and there are three docks and there are six sections on the quantity. Yeah, but is that including... So it'd be two, sec two ten foot sections for one dock, two ten foot for the next, two ten foot. Right, so but what about the dock that connects them? I, like, like the ones that we have, the floating there dock. There is four foot end caps and cross arms. I don't know how they're all configured. I'm not a dock expert, but there are some those as well in there. And they might just connect to the, their seawall bracket. They might just connect to the wall, depending on how it's configured. So I think we need to also see uh, how this is gonna be configured. Okay, so we have motion and support. Was it amended for next meeting? 
Uh, uh, I, I, I amend my support for, okay. for the next so meeting. Next meeting. Next meeting. And there was discussion about this has already been approved, correct? The purchase of the docks. And, and, and I believe, and I, and I ask a question while I'm here, because I, I believe the docks that are presently, the public docks, are 20 foot docks. Okay. Has anybody here got a pontoon boat that has a problem docking at the public docks? So there are problems that you've encountered. Yes. Yes. That's standard length and 10 foot increments, and it will add cost. Could be significant, but it could be requoted. I'm also wondering because of boat traffic in that location as well. So, sir, we close call to the public. Thank you. So, we have a motion on the floor and support to move it to the next meeting. And so, any other discussion regarding that? I'm just curious what we what we do since there was already a motion at a previous meeting to purchase them. So if somebody could help me out with that, just so I know for clarification purposes. I, 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 Teresa, I think you're right. I'm, but I couldn't find any minutes from that thing there. It was just on, on the agenda, and I'm wondering if it was in here or put again back on the agenda by the no, I think it was put back because what was sent to the DDA, and I know there are DDA board members right, here, the, was to purchase the docks. And that was what was given to them okay. and okay. then kicked back to us. Point of order then to our attorney, <laughs> since I made that motion to purchase the docks, can we continue with this motion uh, if I agree to review that the dock should be longer or? Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Aside from being thoroughly confused, I, I kind of question if this council's already had this exact matter before it and made a motion and voted on it, why it's back again. Right. So I, without knowledge of the exact motion, the exact agenda item that was placed at the prior agenda that you consider this, I'm not comfortable actually answering the question. If it was the exact same thing, then yeah, everything's out of order and this shouldn't have even been on the agenda. But it almost sounds like there was a motion that the DDA paid for it, not the village. And that's where my confusion comes in because I wasn't here at those meetings. And if they didn't approve it, uh, you know, and again, you remember your motion. I, so if that was indeed the motion, then this probably shouldn't have been even on the agenda. Mr. Marsh. So my motion was to purchase the docks. In the discussion with the parks, we recognized the need to close off a section of the park to maintain park integrity. And with that, there would have to be a sidewalk and then steps going up to M24 for the people using these docks. The second part of my motion was to approach the DDA for the purpose of purchasing those items. Not the docks. Not the, the docks. Stairs, the, the, access. the stairs, the fencing, one and the access. One motion or two? It was one motion okay. with two hats. Now, gotcha. the, the second half of that is addressed here in that the DDA denied that request. So No, they, the DDA did not get a request for property improvement. They got a request for docks, and they denied the docks. And the DDA director and chair are looking at me and nodding their head in agreement that's the accuracy. But that should have never went to the DDA because mm -hmm. the village approved the purchase of the docks. What should have been presented to the DDA was the purchase or con contribution of access to those docks. Correct. So my, my, my concern over this is we've already approved this. That's what I was proposing. So this entire uh, council action summary request really should be about the cost of that additional access. We've already done this. So because that's not here, I am in, in agreement uh, and, and, to and table this to get those costs and present them at the next meeting. And it wouldn't necessarily be to table this because you've already- We've already voted on this. Table an agenda item based on the miscommunication to the DDA about what the village was seeking from the DB, contribution wise from the DDA for the access. And that would be the reason for the table because you, you're not in a position to reconsider what you 
pursuant to Robert's rules, you would be reconsidering the vote that you took to approve the purchase of the docks, which you haven't satisfied the requirements to meet the threshold to reconsider something you've already ruled on. But it was that two-part motion that I was missing, and that's where a table is probably appropriate to narrow down and figure out that issue and maybe he represented to the DDA appropriately. The correct motion in my belief should be the cost of the act, the securing the park and the steps. We've already approved the purchase of the So steps. maybe as a friendly suggestion to the maker of the motion that you move to uh, postpone to a date certain or table, because I don't know how long that's gonna take, uh, to uh, further clarify not the purchase of the docks, but the, uh, the, the access that was requested of DEA's uh, contribution or participation. Yeah, I have, uh, let's see, I have the floor. I, I withdraw my motion, and as it's uh, 1036, I, I move to adjourn this meeting and continue all this till the next meeting. Second. <laughs> God bless you. I'm totally confused. In the beginning of the agenda, uh, or I'm sorry, approval of the agenda, by order of the president chair, no matters will be discussed after 10.30 p.m. unless council board commission votes to continue the meeting. And now we have a motion on the floor to discontinue this meeting. And we have support. And that would mean that the dock item comes back on the next meeting and the remaining two items, which are the legal review of the DDA items. Council member Lands requested agenda item and also the interim village manager. I would ask, that's important. Well, would then I, like would, to, I would, I would, I would move to um, you could include that item only if you'd like. Okay, then I'll, uh, the right. I'll. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. If the council agrees, I move to adjourn and approve the motion and make a move, motion to form the committee to look for an interim management well, person. Well, if, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. If you want to take something out of order, that's fine. You're now moving things from a approved agenda and moving an item up, which you can do, but it generally calls for the request of unanimous vote or upon a, a two-thirds vote. It requires a two-thirds vote. Robert's rule says request un, un, unanimous vote and will pass. So if, if there's a second to the motion, you need at least two-thirds vote to do that. I'll oh, second. And that's to discontinue the remaining agenda items, but to appoint a committee to yes uh, consider yes. the emergency appointment or a search for a manager. Right. And um, maybe we, we might as well name that committee members right now, and then that's going to be a done deal. Correct. I would suggest a motion first to you're basically moving to adjust the agenda. So that's what requires a supermajority. And then after that, you can uh, uh, discuss and deliberate on the motion and your... And Mr. Lamb, your intentions are not to discuss any more of the docs, the legal review, or the DDA. There's plenty of time for those motions later, so yes. At another date. Yes, we'll just move them can forward. Can I support? Okay. Roll call, please. This is to move the item, right? To adjust the agenda. I just want to make sure I know where I'm going at. Adjust That's the agenda. That's correct. It's going to All right. Move. Habs? Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yes. Thank you. Lamb? Yes. Luxinger? Yes. Matheson? Yes. Narsh? Yes. Rutt? Yes. Van Port, please. Yes. Ocean Carry 7 0. All right, so we have the uh, approval for the uh, special committee for the uh, village manager interim, village manager search, and 
I'd make a motion to uh, place on that committee Teresa, Jerry, anybody else? I'll be on it. Teresa, Jerry, Mr. Matheson. I'm sorry, I just said it. Uh, is that everybody in agreement by that? Are you I would like to be on it. Alternate. That'd be good. So I think you should put Sarah on the no. committee. She's never, she just hasn't been on any committees yet. I'm on the OCC. Except for the OCC, and she's, you know. I'll be an alternate too, if possible. Two alternates. So I make that motion. Can you repeat the, who's on and who's, who are alternates, please? Ms. Rutt, Mr. Narsh, Mr. Matheson, Ms. Lussinger is alternate, Mr. Hobbs is alternate. Okay, thank you. Motion failed, lack of support. I entertain another motion. I move to form a committee with Doug Hobbs, Sarah Luxinger, and Teresa Rutt. A second. Roll call. Who was the third person? I'm sorry. Me, Teresa, and oh, with Sarah. Sarah. Okay, okay. Oh. It's, it's, you, I'm sorry, you, Teresa, and oh. Doug. Doug. Okay. Everybody's good with that? You, you're good. And, and who seconded it? I'm sorry, I was writing no. Thank you. All right. Uh, Matheson. No. Narsh. Yes. Rutt. Yes. Van Portfleet. Yes. Hobbs. Yes. Luxinger. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Motion carries. Motion six. All right. I entertain a motion to adjourn. So Second. Moved. I don't hear support of oh, oh, he's got it. All those in favor, please. I'm sorry, why are you doing that? Because I don't know. Two people pointed to each other. I didn't hear a support. Mr. Matheson. I got that. And Mr. Lamb didn't support. Okay, okay, because he pointed his finger to someone else. So. All those in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Opposed. Means adjourned. Thank you very much.